Hey, YouTube. <laughs> My name is Natalie. I'm a criminal defense attorney. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm going to try to make this thing work. Um, What's the matter, baby? You okay? You haven't had anything to say. And just now you have things to say. What's wrong? Jazz just lost a tooth. So I don't know if maybe she's feeling a little uncomfortable. You want to go? You okay? Can you take a nap? Can you take a nap? She's going to take a nap. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Okay. You did not miss anything. Um, there's 137 of you. Do you want to tell the people what you're thinking? There's 137 of you here right now. If you could please like the video. Hello to all my lovely lawyer chicklets. This is beautiful jazz over here. Um, maybe you're hungry. Maybe your daddy wants to feed you. I thought you ate already. I thought you ate already. I like for jazz to come and hang out with me so I can give Brandon a break because Brandon works from home, whereas I work from an office. And so he's home all day with the puppy and the kitty. And so when I stream, I want to try to give him a bit of a break. But I think Little Miss Thing wants her dad again. She loves him very much. So nice to see all of you. <laughs> nice to see all of you. Um, my name is Natalie. I'm a criminal defense attorney, dog mom and cat mom, crazy cat lady. <laughs> and this is my channel. We are covering the case of Travis Rudolph, who is accused of murder stemming from a shooting that occurred in April of 2022 in Palm Springs, Florida. He's a former NFL player. And we saw yesterday the testimony of his of the lead detective on his case. The lead detective is saying that she basically ignored a lot of evidence that would have supported a claim of self-defense. Um, and once the defense asserts self-defense, the state has to rebut it. And so the state doesn't seem to have done any real investigation into whether or not Mr. Rudolph was acting in self-defense when several individuals responded to his home late at night, uh, texting each other that he was a dead man walking and came to his home armed. Um, there are some questions as to whether or not Mr. Rudolph did more than what was necessary to defend himself um, because there is evidence that the individuals were shot in the side and the back meaning they could have been fleeing at the time. But certainly it doesn't seem like the state did enough in their capacity um, to determine whether or not self-defense was at play here, which I think it's their obligation and duty to do. The lead detective's testimony was very infuriating to me. It was just <sighs> difficult, difficult, okay? Difficult is the best way that I could put it to listen to. Um, it just didn't seem like they took it very seriously. Now we're going to move on to the testimony. This is day two of the testimony of Mr. Rudolph's ex-girlfriend. And I'm starting with day two because it, I think it's an interesting look. I'm not going to be able to cover every single moment of this trial because I have my own trials <laughs> and my own cases. So I won't be able to do that. But what I will be able to do is to cover the highlights. And I think that her second day testimony and her um, her second day testimony and her cross-examination are very interesting. I have not watched even a, a, a scintilla of it, uh, more than a scintilla of it. I've watched just a little bit here and there, but I already said, you know what, let me turn this off because I wanna have a live reaction for the YouTube people. So let's get this pulled up. We won't be doing an icebreaker today just because this is gonna be long. Oh boy. Hold on, you okay? It's some teeth. She's teething and those teeth are bothering her. It's going to be, I've had a long day and it's going to be long. I haven't even gotten to eat dinner. So let's go guys. <laughs> Give me some life in the comment section. Once you guys start hitting that like button, it really, really helps. 
people to know that we're here. We have 180 likes, 337 concurrent views at four minutes and 54 seconds into the stream. So if you could be so kind as to like the video, someone I already saw. Girl, you're gonna have to go with your daddy if you're gonna be making them noises. Um, like the video. Um, I already saw that someone shared the video on Twitter. So if you have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, your own YouTube, please make sure that you share this video uh, so that other people can see that we're here. And we already have a super chat from Tom. Tom, thank you so much for the super chat. Matter of fact, I usually save these for the end, but let me show some love to Tom right now because this is so generous of you. Thank you for the $10 super chat. This is an unrelated potential icebreaker for the future. Today, a U.S. intelligence official confirmed that the U.S. has UFOs, has them for decades. News Nation has a story. I'm not a crazy person. <laughs> I've been hearing, I mean, they've been like slow walking the UFOs to us little by little. They've been giving us that information uh, for, I say like the past year, like they've been letting it out little by little. So I am open. I mean, I've always thought that statistically speaking, if you really understood how humongous the universe is, it is so big. There is no way there is not intelligent life out there. The only thing is that I'm wondering if that intelligent life is um, evolving or advancing and developing at the same rate and pace as we are, meaning like as it's set out from the beginning of the universe, uh, is all life basically on the same trajectory. And so they are at the same ability to travel into space that we are, which is that we can't even leave our own solar system, basically. So I'm wondering if they're that or if they're far more advanced species than us out there, or if it's just like bacterial forms of, of life that's not, you know, that advanced more than just a few, a few cells. So I'm open to the idea of unidentified flying objects, but just because it's an unidentified flying object doesn't mean, okay, well, I tried to eat my dinner and I didn't get to, um, but it doesn't mean that um, they are from another planet. They could be unidentified flying objects from other countries, uh, a private unidentified flying object, like a private individual that makes their own aircraft that's not registered with the FAA. Um, but either way you look at it, I'm down for any conversation that has to do with aliens. What's the matter? Okay. Um, please. You're hungry. Okay. She's barking at my dinner. That means she's hungry. Let me take care of this child. One second.
Thank you for understanding. <laughs> Woo. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so I had to make sure that Jazz was good because I didn't get to eat my dinner. It's just sitting here. And <laughs> she was smelling it. And she was like, excuse me, why can't I have some of that? And I was like, that means you're hungry. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, this is a good question. And then we'll get started. This is way too long to get to the topic. But um, what are my thoughts on the Danny Masterson verdict? I am ill-informed on the Danny Masterson situation. None of it was <laughs> streamed or recorded. And unlike Tory Lanez, I wasn't following. I wasn't really following any of the people that were covering it until just recently because I started getting into like the Scientology, um, like. Um, coverage that's been here on YouTube, like growing up in Scientology and things like that. And so for that reason, I haven't really been up on it. So I should probably catch up on it before I give my opinion. Um, but apparently it was a mistrial and then a retrial. And then they had a hung uh, jury or a hung verdict on one of the women's charges and guilty on the other two. And apparently it took a lot for them to come forward because of like the system of Scientology or something like that. And the judge let in testimony about um, how difficult it is in Scientology to speak out against another Scientologist. That's all that I know about it. Um, yeah. And I actually used to watch that 70s show. So it's not like I don't care about it. I just didn't, didn't really feel like I had the resources to keep up on it as easily as I was able to keep up on other cases. But thank you for asking that. Nefertiti Kamagawa, thank you so much. Um, hey, Natalie, did my gifted subs go through? I got a bonus today and wanted to share with my favorite lawyer chick. <gasps> oh, thank you. That's so sweet of you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> let me see. Did it go through? I don't see it, but let me just double check. Um, Tom says they're confirmed that they're non-human. Thank you for the super chat again, Tom. No, I don't see it on my end, but maybe it just needs to wait a little while to go through, but I don't see it on the YouTube back end or on StreamYard. So maybe just check with YouTube on that before you do it again, just in case. I don't want you to get like double uh, zinged for no reason. So let's um, get right on to this. Uh, I have the enhancer for YouTube, but I didn't practice how to use it. So that's my bad. Um, and I am going to, oh yeah, it's there. Okay, great. So we'll be playing with the enhancer a bit. Cause you know, that's just the type of girl I am. Nefertiti, congratulations on the bonus. Like big, big, big things that go on for you, girl. Good job. It is so nice when your, when your work is being acknowledged. Okay. So I'm learning about this with you guys that don't know about it. And those that do know about it, you're ahead of the curve. Curve. Well, the inhibitor's on here. Okay. Who's volume? All right, Ms. Uh, Jones. Uh, all right, Ms. Edwards, you may uh, continue the direct examination of Ms. Jones. Is that better? Thank you, Your Honor. I just boosted yes, the volume. Good morning. <clears throat> Morning. Yes, I apologize to the jury as well as the judge. I know you guys are on a time limit, but um, something happened with my vehicle. Okay, so uh, thankfully the vehicle got... So what I saw is that already she was late for court. Another witness had to go in front of her. That's how late she was for court um, because they had to get started. And, you know, court is to a very strict time schedule. She already had testified the day before. I think she was the day one, a, a day one witness. So, of course, they would want to pick up with her first thing in the morning, but she was late to court. And, you know, people were talking about with the lead detective, like her physical presentation, which I thought was completely professional. I just thought she's just an attractive person. And sometimes people have a hard time, like, just, you know, separating those two things. This young lady is also an attractive person, but I just wanted to point out something as she's walking to the stand. And this is me coming from a place of, you know, do your thing, girl. But there's this thing about, you know, appropriate from one place to the next. And so I just want to point it out without it being more than just me pointing it out. I just want to point this out. Do you see this right here? Yeah. 
I don't know why it's playing like that. Hold on. I just did something wrong. Oh. Hold on. I think, okay, here we go. The enhancer, you can like speed it up. Listen, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. If I want to say that I think she's attractive, that's my opinion. <laughs> that's my opinion. All right, Ms. Uh, Jones. Uh, all right, Ms. Edwards, you may uh, continue the direct examination of Ms. Jones. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> you had an eventful morning? Yes, I apologize to the jury as well as the judge. I know you guys are on a time limit, but um, something happened with my vehicle. Y'all said attractive okay. wear. So, I don't do uh, that. Thankfully, the vehicle got fixed and you're here. Thank yeah. You. Um, so last evening when we left off, we were talking about a series of text me messages that you got from Tarini, and you said that you did not take her seriously to mean that your brothers would be in danger if they went over there, your brother and his friends. Correct. Um, did you know whether or not Mr. Rudolph had any firearms? Um, yes. And how many firearms did Mr. Rudolph have? Um, two that I know of. I know he had an AR-15 and I know he had like a regular handgun. <clears throat> how familiar are you with firearms? Um, do you know sort of the make, model, anything like that? Not really, to be 100% honest. So you knew one was a handgun, meaning it would be held in the Correct. Shorter gun. And then you said one was right, sort of Jess, a rifle type. Man. You said AR-15, but you're not sure if that's the make or model. Yeah, and he's always said something about like a drum. Like I know he had a drum for the AR-15, but not really educated in that aspect. And do you know where Mr. Rudolph would keep the firearms in the residence? Um, He would keep his handgun in his underwear drawer, and then he would keep his AR-15 like in his closet. And that's the closet in the bedroom as well? Yeah, his bedroom. Um, this is Florida, baby. Yeah, I'm sure it's allowed of, to have that. Happened on the night, uh, well, early morning hours of the 7th, really, going into the next day, <clears throat> um, did you do any web searches about laws or anything having to do with that? Yes. Uh, and why were you doing that? I've never been in a situation like this before in my life, so... She looked up accessory to murder. Quite telling. I definitely just wanted to do research and just look things up to make sure, um, you know, if anything I need to turn myself in or I need to protect myself, I wanted to make sure I knew what to do. Ooh, turn yourself in. And um, did you have a particular interest in the law? As in? Um, did you want to study it? Anything leading. related to that? Objection Go leading. to law school. Oh, well, back in the day, yeah, I didn't want to go to law school. I'm not going to lie, but it ended up not happening. And you that said your happen. profession is With a realtor. Real yeah, I'm a, I do real estate. All right. No further questions at this time. Okay, thanks. Who's going to, all right, Ms. Perlet, so cross-examination. all of her testimony. She also testified the day before, just to be clear. So they weren't just like, all right, have a nice day. But I want to get to the cross-examination. So here we go. Yes, ma'am. Who's it going to be? Good strategy. Choosing a woman to cross her. Great strategy. Great strategy. Oh, thanks, Angel Eyes. You're so sweet. Oh, Nefertiti, your membership gift came through. Thank Good you. Good morning. When you met Travis Rudolph, mm. you knew that he had been in the NFL, is that correct? Correct. You knew he played for the Giants, and then he played for the Dolphins, right? Later on. Right, but he Not initially did I know that, no. But at some point during your relationship, you knew that he had a very lucrative contract with the NFL, correct? I knew nothing about his contract. Okay. But you knew he played for the NFL, right? Correct. And at some point, he became injured, right? Correct. And he was cut from playing with the NFL. He lost his contract, basically, right? Correct. Okay. And he would spend his days down in Miami rehabbing and training, right? No, he would spend his days at home playing video games. Okay. But, so your testimony is that he... Ooh, 
the shade, the shade. Never went down to Miami and was rehabbing his injury in order to play for the Canadian League that he had just landed a contract with. That's not my testimony. You said what was... Go ahead, I'm listening. She, no, you weren't listening because her question was, what was he doing? He said he was playing video games, so... Isn't it true mm -hmm. that he was rehabbing his injury? Sometimes. So then it's true. He couldn't rehab his injury 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're all allowed downtime. What in the world? So she already, so this is already going to make you seem like you're biased when you won't even answer pretty straightforward questions in a straightforward way, or you're answering them in a way so as to make the other person look bad where that's not necessary. So she already seems like she's biased to me. In and other opinion. times he was playing video games. That's your testimony. Correct. And isn't it true that he was Should also I... training down at the NFL facility down in Miami after he was injured? I'm not sure what he would do in Miami. That was a concern of yours, wasn't it? That he was off in Miami and you were you didn't know what he was doing, right? Correct. Okay. When Travis, uh, when you met Travis, he had a nice vehicle, a BMW truck. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And he was taking care of you basically financially when you guys were together, was he not? He was not taking care of me financially at all during our entire relationship. Okay. How old were you when you guys met? 23. So in March of 2020, you were 23 years old? March of 2020. Yes, oh, I was 23. So and you were living with your mom and stepdad and your brother at the time? Correct. That was in the apartment in Delray Beach? Yes. Spring Put it back on the witness. Harbor Apartments? Mm -hmm. Apartment, is that a yes? Yes. Apartment E? Correct. two-bedroom apartment? No. How many bedrooms? Three. Okay. During that time, you didn't own your own home, right? No, I didn't. You were living um, in the home that your parents provided you with, right? Correct. You were living under their roof, right? Correct. You didn't own any property, any real estate, right? No, but I was a realtor. Okay, let's talk about that. You got your real estate license in February of 2020, right? Correct. So right around the time that you and Travis met. Correct. And then COVID hit, right? Correct. And wasn't nobody moving no properties then. People were trying to stay home. Let's see. You made one sale. It was a rental, right? Yes. During I know where she's going already, and the setup is lovely. The setup is lovely. Talking about you didn't rely on him financially. I don't believe you already. The whole time that you had your real estate license. Um, I just got my real estate license in March, not to cut you off, sorry. But I just got my license in March, and then COVID. Okay. Isn't it true that you were not making a living as a realtor? COVID hit. There was no sales going on. You weren't making a living as a realtor, right? Right. Correct. Nobody okay. was. So you're living with your mom and dad. Sure. Feel free to stand up and stretch, please, ladies Let's and gentlemen. Stand. But remember and obey the four cardinal rules. Law and crime, listen to me. Thank you for the live streams. Thank you for no longer challenging every single person who uses your live streams. But if this is your camera, keep the camera on the witness. We know Miss Rudolph is in there. <laughs> and I guess you would want to get his reaction to her testimony. But I really want to see her facial expressions while she's testifying because that goes to her manner of testifying. And I can hear the attitude in her voice, but I want to see what she looks like. Okay, please. <laughs> please. Go back to the witness. Not that they can hear me, and this is days ago, but I'm just saying for future reference. This is a friendly request. <laughs> All right, you may continue. Thank you, Your Honor. So you really weren't making a living as a real estate agent, right? No. Um, no, but I do have a mom, and she's a medical assistant, so. Okay, and you were living okay. with your mom. Good. Right? And, yeah. you, and you also yeah. had some uh, costly cosmetic surgery around that time, right? Oh, I feel uncomfortable discussing that, so. Oh, the, whether she feels comfortable or not discussing it, that's a that's a yes. I'm sorry, making one rental uh, deal, so that's not even a sale. You're doing a bro brokering, you're brokering a rental deal and you're living with your mom and your mom is a medical assistant. 
Did your mom pay for your plastic surgery or did your NFL contract boyfriend with a BW pay for your plastic surgery? Yes. I want to see the relevance of all of this, though. But she's also not a credible person because she's trying to back off from the clear situation. I... Hmm. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. All right, let's skip forward a bit. I know why she came with her attitude. She was like, "I look at her. I got this, okay? She's not going to call me on my BS. I got this. <laughs> oh, girl. You don't During the time These you had cosmetic surgery, did you not? Mm -hmm. I did have cosmetic surgery. Objection overruled because that was an objection, and they argue why she shouldn't be able to ask about the cosmetic surgery, and the judge overruled the objection. They laid some foundation for why this is relevant. During the time you had cosmetic surgery, did you not? I did have cosmetic surgery. Okay. And it's your testimony that um, even though that you weren't making a living as a realtor, you were you were not relying on Travis for any financial help, correct? Correct. Okay. I don't believe you. In fact, yesterday you testified, you told this jury that you never, uh, fin he never financially supported you 1,000%, right? Correct. You, at that time, you were also sleeping over his house pretty much on a daily basis. That's what you told the jury yesterday. Girl, that's right. room and board. And it was during this time that you and Travis were dating that you were actually married to another man, Andre Chinsang. Is that correct? Legally separated, but correct. Well, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. You hooking up with him over at his house and you're married? Oh, the drama. You were still legally married, weren't you? We were, could be married and separated. Okay. So we were separated. Right. But you weren't divorced. Let me put it that way. Correct. Okay. So if you're not divorced, then you're still legally married. Is that correct? I thought separated was a thing when it came to marriage. I thought you can either be married, separated, or divorced. But if you want to get technical, like very technical, yes, we were not divorced. Okay. And while you were dating uh, Travis for this year or so, year and a half, you never told him that you were married to another man, right? No, I didn't. Oh! You testified yesterday that um, you and Travis had a conversation um, about marriage. Is that right? That's what you told this jury yesterday, that you and Travis, at some point, you had a conversation about marriage. You remember that? I didn't necessarily say we had a conversation about marriage. They, We basically were discussing what that, has that came up about a future? And I said things had came up that weren't that serious, but yeah, conversations were had. About marriage. That was your testimony. Not, not specifically about marriage, just about a future between me and him, ba kids, things, et cetera. Stuff like that. Okay, so you're telling this jury today that you did not say yesterday on direct examination that you and Travis had a conversation about marriage. Is that what you're telling this jury? No, we had a conversation about that. Yes, we did. Okay. <laughs> what are you? What are you doing, girl? What are you doing? Oh, Miss Jazz, what are we doing, girl? Careful now. Don't get yourself in trouble. Okay. And you, you had a conversation with a man about marriage, and you're still married to Andre Chusang. Is that correct? Correct. So you lied to Travis. You misled him, did you not? Correct. Travis no, never asked know. me if I was married. Oh, so please. Get an answer. Oh, please. We also have lies of omission. I hate when people do that when they're dating. We also, it's, it's still dishonesty. Because when you're dating someone, by and large, you assume they're single. They're in your house most of the time. You're picking them up. You're taking them on dates. You're hanging out. You assume this person is single. You, you shouldn't have to say, oh, by the way, are you currently legally married? Who would assume that?
sir to be told the truth is that what you're telling this jury she's dishonest i'm just telling the jury that the conversation about me being married never came up so i never spoke on it because i felt like it was not my personal business to speak on what? <laughs> you didn't think that you being legally married while dating this nfl player was your business to speak on she, she's laughable. I mean, again, this is not just for salaciousness. This goes to credibility. I don't believe you. And unless somebody asks very you dishonest. a question, a specific question, you don't have to tell them the correct or honest answer. That's, That's going to play out throughout them. the whole case. I'm not telling you guys that. I'm telling you guys that in relationships, you have a past. It might not be clean. It might not be the best past that you have. But I decided to leave the past of my relationship behind me. When I started dating Travis, I felt like I didn't need to disclose that because it had nothing to do with what me and Travis had going on. So you were talking about marriage and you're married. You never told him, right? Isn't it true you never told him? I never, no, he answered. Answer. Same. Same. Next question. Please. You said don't, that it, don't speak yesterday for the you told the jury that your relationship with Travis wasn't an open relationship. You remember that? Right. How could it not be? So the... the how could it not be an open relationship, at least on your end, when you're married? <laughs> what? <laughs> Girl, I know she was a bad kid. I know it. From looking at that little side eye she's giving right now, this was a bad little girl. <laughs> Implication or the understanding was that this was a relationship that was exclusive between the two of you? Correct. Okay. And Andre didn't fit in this at all? Haven't spoken to him in two years. You got divorced from him um, after Mr. Rudolph's arrest. Is that not correct? Yes, because it was already in the plan before Travis got arrested. You knew in April of 2021 that Travis had uh, received a contract with the Canadian League and was leaving for Canada in the following month in May. Did you not? Yeah, I knew that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he got a contract to play football. He was excited about that. He was leaving for Canada in a couple of weeks, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he wasn't taking you along with him, was he? I didn't ask to go. I had my own. I was a realtor. Okay. I was starting to get back into real estate. Okay. During COVID when you weren't you. making any sales, right? Oh, he was not no realtor. <laughs> he wasn't taking you with him, was he? No. He was leaving you. Right? He was leaving you. He was going off to Canada and he was leaving you here in the States, right? Yes. He had no. It's like you just need to push her just a little bit to get her to tell the truth. But the her initial. No, you were not. Good girl. Chewing your actual toy. Interest in taking you with him. Right. I don't know exactly. Over, overruled. I don't, Stop. Go ahead. Answer the question. No. I don't know what Travis's intentions were Did of taking me. He used to say things like that all the time, but that's hearsay. So I'm not going to oh, say that. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's already spoken up for the prosecutor already, right? Like, she's like, yes, that's this. Mm -hmm. That's what the prosecutor says. And now she's saying her own evidentiary rulings. <laughs> that's hearsay. Ma'am, you are not the lawyer. You are not here to make objections. You are here to answer the questions unless the judge instructs you to do otherwise. Ooh, ooh saucy girl. She's saucy. Trouble. You're telling us, let me ask it this way. This man never planned on taking you with him to Canada. Isn't that true? I don't know that for a fact. Did he ever tell you he was taking you to Canada with him? He would say things like that all the time. You can come visit me, things like that all the time. He wasn't taking you, you with him. He had no intentions because his- I don't, I don't know that. So you ask, you're asking me a question and I'm responding to you. I do not know if he had intentions or not taking I me. I think that's a fair, that's a fair answer because she's asking her to speculate as to his state of mind. She is. The objection from the prosecution is incorrect. It's speculation. She had a different objection. Guys, we have almost 800 people here in this live stream. Have we hit 800? 799, but 387 likes. So we can get to 799 likes. 809 viewers. Yay. We can get to 809 likes during this testimony. I know that we can. You didn't have a plane ticket to Let's go do with him, it. did you? He didn't have one either. He didn't even have a passport. <laughs> he was 
Did you have a plane ticket to go with me? Taking me. Well, I know I didn't have a plane ticket to go with him. Because his I don't I don't know that. So you ask you're asking me a question and I'm responding to you. I do not know if he had intentions or not taking me. You didn't have a plane ticket to go with him, did you? He didn't have one either. He didn't even have a passport. <laughs> did you have a plane ticket to go with Mr. Rudolph to Canada? He was not leaving until May, and no, I did not have a plane ticket. This all happened in April. I'm at the time of this incident. Did you have any means of transport or a plane ticket, anything showing this wow, jury that bored? it was his intention that you were moving to Canada with him? No. Okay. And you knew that in April, when you guys were dating, that it was his plan to just go work in Canada for a short period of time, and his hope was to get back into the NFL. Isn't that true? I didn't know his ins and outs. I knew he had a contract with the CFL and that's the most that I can say to you. That's all I really know. Okay, so he never discussed with you his hope that he was going to come back to Florida and work again for the NFL? That was never a discussion? He has said things like that, but I don't know exactly his intentions of what would have happened. So he did say things like that. There was a discussion with you about that. You just there, that. there was a discussion. Overruled. It's not hearsay. Didn't you it's, his, it's his statement, and she's already testified to it. You'll say that you guys had a... Well, it would, if it's self-serving, it's hearsay. But either way that you look at it, it's she's already testified to it. It's already in front of the jury. Discussion mm -hmm. about that. Yeah, we had a discussion. Is that so hard? It's not. I'm just trying to make sure I'm answering the questions to my best ability. That's okay. it. All you have to do is tell the truth, and it'll be... I am telling the truth, but you're asking... Question. Thank you. Okay. You were... Hoping that when he got the contract with the NFL, that you guys would then be married, like you told the jury you guys had discussed. And no. He, and you would benefit by his millions of dollars that, that he was going to be making from the NFL. <laughs> First of all, I didn't even know how much money he was being offered. Next question. <clears throat> you guys had broken up in April, April 6th of that year, right? You were basically finished. Um, I wouldn't say that from the text messages that were shown yesterday. Well, what about in your mind? Not about the text messages. Isn't it a fact that you guys were pretty much over? I said I wanted a break, but you know how relationships are. Relationships are iffy. You might say you want a break one day. The next day, you guys might be are. Relationships are iffy. You might say you want a break one day. The next day, you guys might be, might be back together. So. You told the jury yesterday that you hadn't seen each other for about a month. You remember that? If you don't see someone, it doesn't mean that you're not with them. Mm. Yeah, just like being married to some doesn't someone to her doesn't mean you're together either. So her definition of relationships is different. All right. She's on her own time. Right. Well, you weren't with each other during that month. That you weren't having any we are so relations during that month, right? We were talking every day, FaceTiming every day, and some days when he would come back down, he would come pick me up and I would see him. Correct. But you would agree that if you don't see somebody for a month and prior to that, the implication is that you were seeing them before that, that the relationship has taken a change in course, has it not? Because I had surgery. So the only reason you stopped seeing each other for a month was because you had surgery. Correct. I was at his house every day before I had surgery. And then when I had surgery, I was only able to move so much. And I wasn't really able to drive in a vehicle that much. You just said that sometimes he would come and pick you up, even though you told I had to sit a certain way. I had to do things a certain way in order to go places. Yes. Oh, she had a BBL. You yesterday that he took care of you for a week, right? Mm -hmm. You were recuperating, right? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. She had a BBL. Yesterday, you told the jury that you were concerned because he was in Miami so long, and I didn't know where we stood. Remember telling the jury that? Yes. Oh. So you didn't know where your relationship was at. Isn't that correct? I didn't know when it came to him being in Miami, but I knew that me and him still had a solid relationship because it was over a year. Well, why did you say then? I was concerned that he was in Miami so long. I didn't know where we stood. I didn't. That's why I was going on the movie date so I can figure out where we stood. Because your relationship was was basically over at that point. You didn't nobody nobody ever said the relationship was over. So, so to my knowledge, it was not over. You 
now said, or what you told you yesterday, was that he was in Miami so long, to use your, your terms. So he was spending a lot of time in Miami, was he not? He was spending time in Miami, yes. He was spending time, more time in Miami than he was playing video games, wasn't he? Mm, kind of in the middle. Okay. And you were jealous that he was down in Miami so long, right? Up. I'm not going to use the term jealous. No, I was not jealous. I want him... I wanted him to do well. I wanted him to go to the CFL. I knew that was his dream. So I, I wouldn't call that jealous at all. Okay, so you knew then, now again, that after he went to Canada, his dream was to come back and his hope was to get a contract with the NFL, right? I mean, usually that's what people decide. I'm not sure exactly what his decision was, but if you go off to the CFL, yes, that is something that you do try to pursue after. How do you know that? You also told the jury yesterday that I felt uncertainty because I didn't see him for a month. You remember that? Correct. Okay, so you basically did not see him at all for a month, right? In person, because I was healing, but I did see him through FaceTime on the phone, through text, every other type of communication. Why would you feel uncertainty if the relationship was had changed course? Why did you care that he was down in Miami? Right. It's not that I cared. It's just that I just had surgery, so I kind of wanted comforting from him and him to be there a little bit more and things like that. So that's more of what it was. Well, you had some concerns because the minute he stepped out of the house when DJ came home, you took it upon himself to snoop through his phone, You right? Ooh. I didn't snoop because he gave me the password. So I just want to clarify that. Oh, hold on. He did not give you the password that day, right? He gave it to me to t let me know. I can look through it whenever I wanted to. Right. That he gave you that password months earlier, earlier on the relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. So it, this is not a situation where you go. He could have given her the password and her looking through it at that moment could still be an indication that she was jealous and worried about the status of their relationship because he's going to Canada. There's women in Canada, right? He may get back in the NFL. There's all more types of other women who would be interested in him. It sounds like she was insecure or at least the way the questions are posed and the way she's answering, she was insecure about her position in his life. It does sound like that to me. You guys are alone in his oh, house. BBL is a Brazilian butt lift where you take fat out of some parts of your body and put them in your butt, usually like the abdominal area and put it in your butt. And after getting that surgery immediately, because you put the fat in your butt, you can't sit down. So you, there's like certain ways uh, you always, it's like a tell when they're like, Oh, I couldn't sit down or I had to like lay down a certain way, or they have to like scrunch on their knees because they can't put any pressure on the air because they just had surgery there so that's just me guessing that's the type of surgery she had i think i'm right he Damn. says hey by the way here's my password feel free to go into my phone i'm going to go step outside that didn't happen right no okay so he walks out for a minute and you could not resist to take his phone his personal property go in put his password and start snooping around right Yes, because we were in a relationship and he gave me that password. I thought you weren't in a relationship. Have you snooped around in his phone on prior occasions with his password? No, because I, I just had surgery, so I haven't seen him in, like, I haven't seen him in a while. So you were snooping around because you were... I wouldn't use the word snoop. Overruled. You were snooping around because you were concerned about him seeing other women down in Miami. Isn't that the bottom line? The bottom line is he's he was my boyfriend at the time. I haven't seen him in a month, and I was curious. That's the bottom line. You are married. <laughs> you were legally married and did not tell this man that you were married. And we're supposed to just trust you had no relationship with your legal husband whatsoever. We're supposed to trust that. And you're snooping through his phone and you don't want anyone to believe that it's because you're worried. You know, it's cheaters who are always concerned about other people cheating. Always. You didn't want to lose him, right? Of course not. Okay. And when Travis said that he found Ky um, Kyla's body more attractive than yours, you became infuriated. <gasps> right? No. You didn't? No. You, didn't, you weren't upset that he found Kyla more attractive than you? No. When you saw the text from Kyla, oh. you told the jury yesterday, it was time for me to go. You remember that? Correct. Okay. Who's Kyla, y'all? Who's Kyla? 
And what you mean that didn't make you angry? If I saw Brandon texting a woman anyway, that would make me angry. <laughs> and if he was like, oh, yeah, I find her body more attractive than Natalie's. <laughs> war! <laughs> it's going to be a war in here. Who are you talking about? Not me. <laughs> so I don't know what she's, I don't believe that for a second. That's just human nature. And when you saw the text from Kyla, Travis was still outside, right? He was out with his brother. You were you were looking through his phone when he was outside. Correct. So you waited for Travis to come back into the house to confront him, did you not? I more so didn't confront him. I just went into the room to grab my things. So you didn't walk right out the door, did you? I went to go grab my things, and he seen his phone on the couch, so he kind of put two and two together. You waited for him to come back in so that you can confront him. Isn't that what's happening? I didn't confront him. He kind of confronted me about the situation because he's seen his phone was open. You wanted to hurt him, and that's why you stayed in the house so that you could confront him. And she doesn't need her to answer the way she wants her to answer. She just needs to ask these questions in order to suggest it in the mind of the jury. And then the jury can evaluate her answers to see if they think she's telling the truth or not. So these are really, really good questions where it doesn't really matter what the answer is. And then destroy his property. Did you not? Ooh. No, I wanted to grab my things and I wanted to leave. Ooh. You immediately went off on him, didn't you? No. Yesterday you told the jury I was, I was hurt. I was not angry. You remember that? Yes. You were actually very angry, were you not? I was more so hurt than angry. But you were also angry, weren't you? I was more so hurt than angry. But you were also angry. You can ask her again because she didn't answer yes or no. She's really thinking she's owning this thing. <laughs> I can tell from her face. She's like, got her. <laughs> no, girl. No, you look real, real bad. Real, real bad. Who Kayla? Now I want to see what Kayla looks like because I'm messy. But this is, I mean, honestly, this is really terrible since someone died behind this. Just childish stuff. Do you remember giving testimony under oath on November 8th of 2021? No. You don't remember coming to courthouse? I remember, but you have to kind of refresh my memory. You remember coming to the courthouse, right? You were subpoenaed. For the self. You were, you were subpoenaed to come to the courthouse and you gave sworn testimony. Do you remember that? Was it the deposition? I'm, You're not supposed to. I'm just sure. <clears throat> Answer the questions. She's going to end up saying something she shouldn't and prejudicing the jury. She's just answering that question. Stand up and stretch, ladies and gentlemen. There's some type of issue being raised. Some type of objection. When they say, may we approach, someone's made an objection. I think the state made the objection. I want to know what. Let's see. He's shaking his head. I like this judge. Hmm, wonder how that turned out. Oh, people ask me about Mr. Rudolph going up there. That is completely normal. That is his choice, whether or not he wants to go up there because, and it's it's easier to do it when you're not in custody too. But anyway, it's his choice to go up there and um, every, every client, they, they get to make that decision on their own. They're telling, yeah, she was about to say something she shouldn't get into probably something the jury shouldn't know about. And so they're instructing her right now not to talk about like where the testimony was taken from or something like that.
she might have given testimony in like multiple proceedings. I can't read lips. Just that word. Just that word. It might be deposition. It might be her saying deposition. It's good to get in good with a witness who's very combative because sometimes I can get them to open up more. Ah, oh, no, go back. Do you remember giving a sworn statement on November 8th of 2021? Yes. And do you remember being asked similar questions about uh, whether you were angry after you noticed that he was talking with Kayla? Um, I believe those questions were asked. Okay. And do you remember the question? Um, Sustained. Wasn't the question asked of you, and that made you very angry? Sustained. you got to show her right. the, the document. I don't... Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> the impeachment's not proper. She could ask her, didn't you say at a previous proceeding this? And she could say, I don't remember. She can refresh her recollection that way. Or she can say no, and then she can present her with the document and impeach her that way. Um, but she hasn't laid the proper foundation for impeachment yet. Okay. Yesterday, you told the jury that you told Travis a million times, I want to leave, and he wouldn't let me go. You remember that? Yes. Mm. And isn't it, in fact, that he was the one that was actually trying to calm you down? Not at the beginning, no. At Not some at point, he was trying to calm you down, wasn't he? No. Isn't it true that he was trying to talk some sense into you? No, I was trying to get my things and leave, and he was trying to stop me from leaving. You also used the word that Travis was acting erratic yesterday. You remember that? Correct. The fact that you were the one that was actually being erratic. I would say he started it, and then, yes, I became erratic right after. So after you saw the text messages from Kayla, you actually had Travis FaceTime her, did you not? Yes. Oh, confrontation. Did you FaceTime her, or did you have Travis FaceTime her? I just put the phone up and pressed FaceTime okay, so, so you, she didn't see me or anything. And the reason you did that was so that she could only see Travis and you could evaluate or watch the way that uh, Travis was interacting with her. Did you not? These Correct. relationships are stressful. And so what did you, after you saw that interaction, you, it was your impression that somehow these two had a relationship, right? I wouldn't say a relationship, but something was going on, yes. It was more than a friendship, right? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. And that infuriated you as well, right? No. I'm not no? going to use the word infuriated. You were angry? More. <laughs> you made him call the girl on FaceTime to have a confrontation, and you weren't infuriated or angry? I don't believe that. Hurt. Mm, so you hurt. smashed his iPhone, not out of anger, but because you were hurt? Yes. Okay. You also picked up the metal trophy on his dresser, um, and you hit him over the head, did you not? I did not hit him over the head. So what did you do with the metal trophy? If I hit him over the head with the metal trophy, would I you... What you did instead, not if... I held the metal trophy up because he was standing in front of the door. I was asking him if I could leave. He said no. So I picked it up and I said, let me leave. And he ended up raising his hands up and he said, okay, you can go. All right. So you never hit him with the trophy. You never threw the trophy at him. None never. Him, right? Not at all. Okay. Um, you also took his PlayStation and broke it. Did you not? That was far. For, are we going in chronological order or no? Uh, 
I'm going in, I'm asking questions, you're answering them. Okay. The question was, regardless of the chronological order, at some point you took his PlayStation and you smashed it, did you not? Yes, after I was slammed on the ground, I did. Okay. Ooh. So you did all these things, not out of anger, but you did them because you were hurt, right? It got to a point where it was angry, but with the questions that you were asking me, was I infuriated about him saying things about Kayla or the other things you're asking me that was out of hurt but did it, it did get to an angry point yes it did and that's when he was following you outside and he was in your ear telling you that kayla had a better body than you right Ooh. it was more than that it was the bitch word the fuck you the it was more than just about a female okay and isn't it true Terrible. let's talk about the b word Very you were calling him a broke bitch you were screaming at him out there on the front lawn were you not after he started calling me one first, yeah, I, I was. So you called him a broke bitch. What did you mean by that? That he has no money? But you're not yeah. angry. Okay. Exactly. Yes. Remember, she wasn't angry. So why though. was that important? Why the fact that he had no money? Why was that Why was that something that was important to you at that point? It was wasn't important to me because I was still dealing with him when he didn't have money. Okay. But why, why, is that, why was that important at that point when you're being... Um, because he's saying low blows to hurt my feelings. So as a reaction, as a human, I'm going to say low blows to hurt his feelings. Okay. So you were pretty fired up at this point, right? So you're I wasn't angry. really that fired up, but I was upset. Yeah, right. You're saying he's a broke bitch and you're not that fired up. I don't believe that for a second, ma'am. And I was re reacting to what he was saying to me at that point. Yes. He testified yesterday before this jury that he compared me to other women. You remember that? Yes. Oh. So... Besides Kayla, who else did he compare you to? He, it was just, I can't pinpoint names or anything like that. I don't really remember. It was just a lot of different names of who I am, what I am, okay. and things like that. And that, that set you off, right? Mm. You know, it didn't set me off. I, just, I wanted to go. It was ready. It was time for me to go. It was just getting too heated. Right. Well, you say now you wanted to go, but didn't you tell the jury yesterday? Then Travis said, Get the F out of my house. Do you remember telling the jury that yesterday? Oh, I told the jury that I had to go get my things. You told the jury. Then he said, get the F out of my house. That's not that's what consistent. you told the jury. Yesterday. Okay. He might have said that. That's Yeah, he said that. He wanted you out. So that's not consistent with you wanted to leave and he wouldn't let you leave if he's telling you to get the F out of his house. He wasn't blocking you. He wanted you out of the house. He wanted me to get out after he told me to go in the house to get my things. So I went into the house to grab my personal items that I brought over there. Right. So he's not he holding didn't you want hostage. you there anymore. Jack. He wanted you out of his house. That's what you told the jury yesterday. Okay. He wasn't keeping you confined in there, was he? He was. He wasn't falsely imprisoning you yet uh, uh, on the 6th, was he? He was keeping me confined in the room. That's why I picked up the trophy. Well, crap, and then he told you to get out. That's You're not in chronological order, so you're seeing it. At some point, he told you to get at, get the F out of his house, did he not? After he held me in the room and was not allowing me to leave. He wanted absolutely nothing to do with you. Isn't that the fact? I wanted absolutely nothing to do with him. And isn't true, you told this jury yesterday, that Travis said, I don't like you anymore. You remember that? You remember telling this to the jury yesterday? He was saying, I don't necessarily remember him saying those exact words, but he was saying a lot of things. Like like I, I said as... Then why did you tell the jury yesterday? He said, I don't like you anymore. I don't... You remember that? You remember telling this to the jury yesterday? He was saying, I don't necessarily remember him saying those exact words, but he was saying a lot of things. Like like I, I said as... Then why did you tell the jury yesterday? He said, I don't like you anymore. He probably did say that. He was saying a lot of hurtful things. So he did say that, right? Okay. So yeah. All right. So he told you to get the F out of his house and he didn't like you anymore, right? Okay. Is that true? Over a million other words, but yes. Okay. Well, those I'm asking you about those specific words, not the other million words that he said. Yes. So he said a million words? Not a million, but he said a lot of other things. So you just told the jury he said a million words. So is that true? He said other a lot of other things. I'm asking you if your he said a lot of other things. My question. I'm asking you if your testimony right now that he told you a million words, if that's an exaggeration or if that's the truth. She's obviously he didn't say one million words. That's what you just told them. But he, 
he said a lot of other things to me. Are there other things you've exaggerated about during your testimony? Not at all. I've been extremely truthful. Guys, I am yelling right now. She is eating her up, but I'm trying to eat my own food. So just, I'm yelling right along with you. Oh my God, she is eating her up. All right. So despite the fact that he told you these things, you want the jury to believe that he was the one that was blocking you Objection during this event. Asked and answered, sustained. Next question, please. I was, um, you, you didn't want to leave because what you were doing was interested in destroying his property, right? No. Yesterday, you told the jury, I was saying stuff, but Travis started, right? Right. And isn't it a fact that you are the one that actually started this whole thing by sneaking and looking into his phone? I didn't sneak and look through the phone if I have the password. But he didn't tell you you could look at his phone, did he? But if someone gives you something and tells you you are allowed to look at it, I don't believe that it's called sneaking. Isn't it true that you were the first person to well, become physically violent when Travis with Travis and not the other way around? No. Not at all? When we were in the house, he was already nudging me to get out. You were the one that was first physically uh, I thought he was holding violent. you against you your not? will. Um, if you can play something or show me something, if you, I can't recall the exact steps of the moments you may Yes. Do you remember me asking you those questions? I'm reading. Give me one moment, please. Well, I'm asking you, do you remember? I'm trying to read them so I can... Okay. No. Listen to the instructions. She's so hard-headed. There's a certain way it has to go. 14 to 16. 14, okay. You have to say first whether or not you remember, and then she gets to show it to you. So that that's not appropriate. And you're trying, no, I need you to tell me, I need to read first. You need to listen to what this woman is telling you to do. She comes across as so combative. Even in this, I'm going to believe that you started the fight because <laughs> you're so combative already. Um, Let's take a pause for the cause. Housekeeping. My friends. Wonderful lawyer chicklets, chicks, and non-binary avian creatures. We have 993 concurrent viewers. We're so close to a thousand. We celebrate when we hit a thousand. We have 603 likes. 603 people have their shoes off. They've got on some comfy, cozy socks. Uh, the AC is blasting in here right now. So you've got a cool drink. It's got some ice in it, whether that be alcoholic or non-alcoholic. And we are just relaxing and enjoying learning about the law in what is a very tragic case, but we're learning about the law, which is important. We just hit it. 1K, 1,000 concurrent views. It's been a while since we've gotten there in a live stream, guys. So let's celebrate. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate all of you. I see the chicklets. I see the scales. 
We're in here, okay? We got roosters, we got chicklets. We're, we're turning up. Thank you guys so, so much for supporting this channel. Um, thank you so much for helping this channel to grow. We also hit 997 concurrent views back in 1004. That's what I'm talking about. Let's keep it at a thousand. We've got this. Um, keep those likes coming in. That helps it to push it through the algorithms as people know that we're here so that people know that we're here. I don't know why that came all mumbly like that. And aside from that, guys, this channel is growing. We hit 123,000 subscribers today or last night. Um, we've been stuck at like 120, 121, back to 120, 122, back to 120. And a lot of that had to do with me being so inconsistent on the channel. But I've been able to be consistent lately. We've gotten up to 123,000 subscribers. So thank you to all you new lawyer chicklets. Thank you guys for sticking it out. Some of you have been here for two years. Some of you have been here for six months. Some of you just joined today. So it's nice to see you. Let's go. This girl is lying. <laughs> this girl is lying. The girl's a liar. The girl's a liar. <laughs> It's a serious case, but it's hard to take her seriously because she's not okay. telling the truth. Question. Okay, so you were the first one to become physically violent with Travis, not the other way around. Answer. Correct. <gasps> this is correct. Girl! All that talking you were doing, all that chatting about how, oh, no, he started it. You previously testified under oath that you started the physical confrontation. Now, I really don't believe what you're saying here today. Let's run that back. Question. Okay, so you were the first one to become physically violent with Travis, not the other way around. Answer. Correct. Yes, it's correct. You remember that? Yes. So you were the first one to become physically violent with Travis, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you told us under oath on November 8th. Go back to her. I want to see her face. Right. Yes. Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. But today, you're just saying that, that that's not true. I didn't say that. I said I didn't remember. I said if you can show me something to recall. My that's not what you said at first. No, it wasn't until she started pulling out your testimony that you were saying something different. At first, you said, no, he started the confrontation. He started the physical confrontation. I wasn't angry. You lying in these 12 people's faces. Memory. If they can, well, I need to see the rest of the evidence, but they, if this is the woman who started it all and they convict him off of this, it's going to be so messed up. Yeah, I just said that. I, you do remember that, that he, you were right. the one that started being physically violent with him. Yes, after he started calling me names in my face, running me down, yes, I tried to push him away from me. You may. Get her. She's on point. This defense team, this defense team is on point. They're on fire. Excellent defense team. One, one of the best I've um, seen Yesterday this year. you testified to this jury on direct examination that Travis manhandled you, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Um, you've also testified that he uh, threw you, picked you up off your feet and... <sighs> Slammed you to the ground two times. Is that correct? Right. Oh my Is that God. correct? Right. So he literally picked you up off your feet and then slammed you to the ground on two occasions. I right. don't believe that for a second. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I, well, I haven't seen if she's had any injuries, but that's a, a football player. It's a big, tall man picking you up and slamming you down two times, picking you up and slamming you down. He would cause you serious injury. I don't believe that for a second. I want to just do a, a quick acknowledgement. Sorry, guys. I got 50 gifts gifted from you guys got this. Tersek, who is a, a lawyer uh, chicklet. He's at the rooster level right now, or they are. They gifted five Natalie Lawyer Chick memberships. Thank you so, so much. We have 78 new members in this stream alone. The members help to sustain this channel, keeps the channel going, especially when I have like lulls and things like that. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you. I'm sorry to keep interrupting, but you know, I got to do the YouTube stuff. Uh, back to the video. Picked you up and slammed you down two times. I don't believe it. And just, uh, she's lost all credibility for me at this point. I don't believe anything she says. And you testified that he was disrespectful yesterday, 
That's the moral of the story. Is that correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Isn't the moral of the story is that you sent your brother and his friends to go kill Travis? No, the moral of the story is him putting his hands on me. That is really the basis of everything. And, and I so even even then, so they came to retaliate for you saying that he put his hands on you, and then they came out there to kill him because of that. Because either way, that would not be justified for them to roll out into his, to his house armed. And that send way. my brothers to kill him. So you just sent a text to go shoot up his shit, right? <gasps> I, I didn't say shoot him. You uh, sent a text to go shoot up his shit, right? Correct. Let's tell the jury what the shit is. When you're angry, you say things. I'm sure everyone in this courtroom has yeah, said something. When you're, I'm trying to speak. If you want me to answer your question, you have to let me answer your question. Well, if you were responsive to my question, I wouldn't have. To All right, answer. answer the question, please. You're not answering okay. the question. Can you repeat your question? The question was shit. What does shit mean in the context? Love the judge. Question was shit. What does shit mean? <laughs> He really liked saying that. He pronounced every single letter. Text of that text. What does it mean? Anything but him. Get the fuck out of here. Get the hell out of here that go shoot up his shit meant anything but him. If I told somebody to go rock someone else's shit, black people, you know what I'm talking about. Go rock his shit. That means to go mess him up. Go shoot up his shit. Come on, man. Don't insult our intelligence out here. Come on. Okay. Can you repeat your question? The question was shit. What does shit mean in the context of that text? Anything but him. Okay. You so a liar. Could have been his brother? No. It could have been the house? Nothing violent toward a person. It could have been his mother's house, right? Nothing violent. You sent them to go shoot him up. Even if they shot up his house and no one, and you don't think anyone is home, there could have been a cleaning person home. There could have been children in the house. They could have accidentally shot an innocent by everyone's an innocent bystander in this case, but just someone walking their dog. A, a bullet could have gone through his house straight out the back and hit something else. You send anyone to shoot at anything. I don't understand how she's not charged with conspiracy. I don't understand how she's not charged with murder under the felony murder. I don't get it. How is she not an accessory? I don't understand. You set them to go shoot him up and they had a, at least a gun when they responded to his residence. This is ridiculous to me. I was upset and I my adrenaline was running and I said something that I didn't mean. That's the bottom line of that. I didn't mean for him to do, for my brothers to do any of that. That's why when my brother left the house, he did not have a firearm on him. So you're not answering my question again. Okay. okay. You told the jury that shit meant anything other than a person, right? That's what you just told them. You remember that? Okay. Can I clarify the jury? Finish my question. Okay. Didn't you just tell the jury that shit meant anything other than a person. Yes or no? I would like to clarify that. Well, answer, answer yes or first. No, and then you can clarify. Did you not just tell them that? I did tell them that, but I want to clarify what I mean. Because okay. you're a liar. When I said that, I was upset. I was angry, and I said something that I didn't mean. My adrenaline was running. You already said that bull crap. She's making me angry because someone died behind this foolishness. Absolute foolishness. There was no need for this. Mr. Rudolph could have been killed. Innocent bystanders could have been killed. This doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Sometimes we have to learn to let our pride go. Your pride got hurt because he was talking to another woman. Your pride got hurt because he said the other woman looked better than you. That does not mean that you go set somebody up to get killed. Um, am I? I am clarifying my answer. No, you're not. Am I not? You're repeating yourself. Go ahead. Finish. So I was upset and, uh, and I ended up saying something that I didn't mean. Like people say things when they're upset that they don't mean all the time. But since the situation has happened, it obviously blew up 20 times more. But I didn't necessarily mean for anything to happen to yes, Travis, sir. his family, his house or anything. It's like my, it was like my second home. I would not want anything to happen oh. there. All right. Now it's like your second home. Before it was I had my own place. I had my own money. I was a realtor. Now it's your second home. So again, here. when you just told the jury that when you sent the text to go shoot up his shit, to, 
to shoot meant anything other than a person. I just clarified my answer to the jury. I'm asking, isn't that what you just told them? Sustain, sustain. <laughs> Next question, please. Isn't it true that when you left his house, that he didn't slam you to the ground, well, he didn't lift you up off your feet and slam you to the ground, that you actually tripped and fell? I didn't trip and fall. Isn't it true that Travis put his foot out and you tripped over his foot and you fell? No, that's not true. So you're telling this jury that the video that we saw from the ring camera shows him picking you up off your feet and <laughs> slamming you to the ground. You can barely see it because Daryl's in the way. Okay, so it's the video does the video that the video that we seen yesterday. You can barely see the physical the full physical between me and Travis. Well, the video right. doesn't show that. Then. The video is the video, right? Correct, but you're night not, later. You're not suggesting to the jury that that video was tampered with, right? No, not at all. But I'm just saying the angle of it wasn't, you couldn't see the full I don't testimony mean, of what I'm I don't saying. Trust nothing you say. Well, we saw you. Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Correct. We saw Travis, right? Yes. We saw you fall to the ground, right? And you saw Daryl in front of the entire thing. And we saw you on the ground, right? Correct. We saw you jump right back up, right? Correct. And then we saw you storm into the house, right? Yes, he was saying to get my things. Okay. You told Keyshawn that uh, Travis slammed you to the ground two times, right? Correct. <gasps> you also told the police oh. that Travis slammed you to the ground several times, right? Hyping Correct. these people up you also to come told and kill Tyler him. that Travis slammed you to the ground a couple times. Correct. And you also told that to Tierney and Linda, right? Correct. And to be clear, Tierney is Tierney Coleman, Travis's sister. Correct. And Linda is his mom, right? Correct. So you told basically everyone that night that he picked you up off your feet and slammed you to the ground. Correct. I want to see that video. Have they, they now, played it already in the trial? I'm on assuming. the on the video we saw. Uh, you ran or you went back in the house uh, for the purpose of getting your tequila bottle, right? I was grabbing all my things. I, I think I still had things on the couch as well. One of the things you went back into the house to grab was your tequila bottle, was it not? Correct. Priority. You had bought early that evening. Correct. That was your bottle. Oh, so you were drinking? Heightened emotions and poor perception when you get intoxicated. I'm just saying. Bottle, not Travis's, right? Correct. And... Isn't it a fact that you started um, hitting him? Um, and we saw that on the video yesterday that you started hitting him with your fists. Yes. Right? And you were slapping him, were you not? I wasn't. I don't think I slapped him, but I did like throw a punch or two. Yeah. At him. So I can go in there and get my stuff. He wasn't letting me. Okay. So he was physically holding you and not letting you go in. He was blocking me from going in. He's telling me to get my things. I'm going in there to get my things. Then he's blocking me saying like back up. And he never raised a hand and touched you, did he not? Yeah, he was raising his hand the whole time, like grabbing me, pushing me back. Yeah, the whole time. Okay, so he was, did he punch you? No, he didn't punch me. Did he slap you? No, he didn't slap me. Did he pick up any objects and hit you over the head with them? No. So other than standing there, right, and he, he did absolutely nothing else to you? Just phys like a physical... Physical altercation without punching or slapping or anything like that. Just the grabbing of grabbing me up and DJ trying to grab him. It was. Where was he grabbing you? Was he grabbing you by the hair? Just like by my shoulders, but like by my arms, like trying to get out, things it's like that. To listen now Even because I just told you to get her out of his house, right? No, he told me to go in there and get my stuff. Because okay. he wanted you out. He wanted you out of there. And I was leaving with my things that I brought. Including your bottle. It doesn't matter about the bottle, but I wanted my actual clothes and things that I brought because I used to sleep over there all the time. Well, it doesn't matter about your bottle because when you did leave the house eventually, you took that bottle and mm -hmm. hit him over the head. Sustained. Isn't it true that after you left the house, you picked up a brick outside on the lawn? Ooh. Um, I picked up a lot of things and I threw a lot of things. I'm not 100% sure about everything, but I threw, I was throwing things, yes. Okay. And you picked up that brick. It was your intent to smash Travis's car window, was it not? It wasn't my intention. I was just frustrated and angry wow. and I was throwing things. Wow. Including the brick, right? Correct. 
Why do you want to smash his car window? I, like I said, it wasn't intentional. I was just throwing things because I was upset. And you, when you were throwing things. You, and you said at the beginning, you were not enraged. Get out of here. You're hitting him. You're throwing things. And you started the physical altercation according to your prior testimony. You were also screaming things at him like you were going to send your brother Keyshawn over to kill him, right? <gasps> Never, ever, ever said the word kill at all. Okay, so when you were yelling at him, telling him that you're sending your brother Keyshawn over, it was just to shoot up his shit? Ooh. Um, I texted that message. Yes, I did. No, when you were screaming and yelling at him while you still were at his house. And telling him that you're sending Keyshawn over. What exactly? Did I you never threatened. I never threatened him. The messages between me. And what are you saying? You're sending Keyshawn over for if it's not a threat? What's the point of saying Keyshawn's name in this discussion with him if it's not a threat? And my brother were only between me and my brother. They have never seen those messages, and so everything has came out. This day, you you're aware that Travis's car window smashed, right? Correct. Did you do it? Yes. When did you do it? Um, right before I left. While Travis was still outside? Um, I don't know if he was outside or inside, but he was still outside yelling. Okay, so we saw some video yesterday after you left. Mm -hmm. Travis is still outside. You remember that? Yeah. So your testimony is that while he's outside, you smashed his, his uh, car window, right? No, I, I wasn't there at that point. I think I was already on my way home at that point because I didn't see those videos. When he came outside with no shirt on and all that, that was my first time seeing that. So when did you exactly smash it? After you were on the lawn, picked up the brick, DJ and Travis came, they took the brick away from you. You remember that? Correct. And then you got in your car and you left, did you not? Yeah. All right. So you didn't How break the window. car window at that point, right? I was throwing things, so it could have hit it at that point. So it's possible that you hit, hit it at, while Travis was still outside or had he gone back in the house? I'm not sure. You also, uh, when you left the house, you called your brother Keyshawn. You remember that? Yes. Okay, and you were still crying and upset when you called him, right? Yes. And then you also called Tyler Robinson uh, when you left uh, Travis's house, did you not? Yes. And you were crying and upset at that point as well? Yes. And you told both of them that Travis had picked you up and slammed you to the ground, right? Yes. And that he had disrespected you? Yes. And you also sent a text message to Keyshawn uh, at roughly 945 that Travis dropped you to the ground. Do you remember that? Yep. And in response to that text message, Keyshawn sent a group text message to you and Tyler Robinson that Travis is a dead man walking. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -mm. And that's the message that you deleted from your phone, right? Woo. No, I deleted the shoot his shit up message. And you also deleted the dead man walking message. Oh, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't remember if I did or not. The shoot your shit up and dead man walking message. That is so incriminating. <laughs> you deleted the messages that showed that you guys had the intent to at least harm Travis when, you sh when they came back to his house. You deleted those messages. What do you mean you weren't planning to set him up? Why did you delete messages so that this jury couldn't see them? Because she was. It what? I couldn't hear the full objection. It, it is argumentative phrase that way. Rephrase, please. Sustained. Why would you delete evidence so that it's not available for the jury to see? That's argumentative. The evidence wasn't deleted for the jury not to see because clearly I'm standing up here right now and I'm admitting that I did delete the messages and I'm confessing that I did turn my phone into the police enforcement. It wasn't for the jury not to see. After all these actions have happened, you have to understand how that looks. It looks ridiculous. Beforehand, if nothing like that happened, it would have just been words that were said. People say things when they're mad, their adrenaline is running all the time. So that is the reason why I deleted them. She was coached to say that because she said that over and over again. People get mad. Their adrenaline was running. My adrenaline was running. This is what people do. No, this is what you did. These are your actions and you need to own up to them. And that's not normal to send someone to someone else's house with a gun. To send a group of people to someone else's house with a gun. That's not normal behavior. So she keeps distancing herself from her behavior and saying, oh, yes, people like jury, people out there, people do this all the time.
People get upset. They say words out of anger. It doesn't mean that they mean them. But you know what shows that you really did mean your words? Is that people actually acted on your words. And there's no text messages from her saying, stop, no, don't go out there, never mind. I was just upset. I changed my mind. Come back. There's nothing from her saying that. So this is clearly what she wanted to happen. It just backfired. And one of them got killed instead of Travis being killed. Them after I came to the conclusion that there was a shooting. Oh my God. You were concerned about that. You had a guilty conscience, did you not? I still have a guilty conscience to this day. And I and I will say that to the jury, to everybody in here. Of course I do. Okay. But it was never my intentions for no one to die or for even for him to be sitting over there right now. To go shoot it up, whatever, whatever the shit was, right? Like I said, I made a, a, a terrible choice of words during that time. I was 23. I was young. I was dumb. I made a very, very bad decision when I said those words, but it was never my intentions. You deleted those text messages because you know that they were incriminating, right? No. I deleted those te text messages because it actually happened and I'm, I was what? confused. And what actually happened? They actually Travis actually words. shot at them. Okay. So I immediately thought in my head, they're going to think this is, I, I planned something. Like, that's immediately what's on my head. <laughs> You're worried about you getting arrested and you getting in trouble and setting this whole thing into motion. No, no. I was worried about saying the wrong thing and it actually, something coming out of it. That's what I was worried about. And you deleted it. Correct. And when I was asked for it, I gave it to them. Well, when you, after you deleted those text messages before you gave your phone to Detective Vanderland. And Detective Vanderland asked me, did you delete anything out of your phone? I'm not asking you what she said. My question was that you deleted those text messages before you gave your phone to law enforcement. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And those text messages were never found on your phone because you deleted them. Is that not correct? I don't know that. And the only reason that we have those text messages is because they were found on your brother's phone, on Keyshawn's phone. If you know, do you know? No, I don't know. So to this day, as you sit here, you have no clue how those text messages were discovered by law enforcement. Because we no. know they weren't on your phone. Right? No, I don't know how. You knew at the time of that this incident that your brother owned a gun, right? Correct. That was a nine millimeter Glock. Correct. And you also knew that he had owned other guns um, over a course of time. Did you not? Um, I knew he had his license to carry. I didn't ask about his license and to carry. My, I'm question, not... my question was. You knew that he also had other guns during the course of the time that he owned that he first bought his first gun. He had owned other uh, guns besides that Glock. That was my question. Not his concealed weapons permit. She's arguing. What's the objection? Oh my God! Who do you think you are? You are not an attorney. She's argumentative. You don't even know what that means. Be quiet. Is the question? All right. Rephrase. It is. You knew. That your brother owned at the time of the incident one gun. Is that correct? A Glock? Right. That's your testimony? Right. But he also owned other guns, right? I'm not sure during his time of how many guns. I don't. Well, are you aware that he had a nine millimeter Taurus that he sold to Tyler Robinson? Yes. Okay. What other guns are you aware of that your brother had and sold? Um, the gun that you just mentioned. I know who sold that to Tyler. Any other guns that you're aware of that he had and sold? No. You're not aware that he had a 380 that he purchased and sold? No. Oh, you knew that Tyler Robinson also, at the time of the incident, owned a gun, the Taurus 9 millimeter. Did you not? No. The gun that your brother sold, you didn't. You weren't aware that he still that Tyler still. I'm not. I'm not aware of the exact transaction when the transaction happened. How many days? I'm not aware of that. But yes, I am aware that the gun was sold to Tyler. And you're aware that Tyler Robinson discovered since that Tyler Robinson in fact did take a gun with him to Travis Rudolph's house, right? If you know. If you know. Didn't know that. So to this day, as you're sitting here, you're telling this jury. As After. You, I, hold on. You're telling this jury as you sit here today under oath mm -hmm. that this is the first time you're hearing that Tyler Robinson brought a gun with him to Travis Rudolph's house. Is that what you're telling the jury? No. So when did you learn that Tyler Robinson brought a gun to Travis Rudolph's house? I can't remember the exact time I learned. But you, you know that now, right? Right? Yes, I know that now. So you tell Tyler and your brother to go shoot his shit up, and Tyler Robinson actually brought a gun to his house, right? Huh? Is that yes? A yes. yes. Yeah. Have you ever asked Tyler Robinson why he brought his gun there? Um, he says he carries his gun. The question is, did you ask him? No, I never asked him. 
Are you just going to give an answer? So which is it? You didn't let me. So you choose. Oh. Ms. Jones, just answer. Sorry. <laughs> question was, was, what was the question? Cool. question was, did you ever ask him? No. Okay. Next question. Is the way you talk to me, is that the way you talk to Travis? <gasps> How am I talking to you? I feel like I'm being respectful. Good job. Okay. So you. Good job. Call it out. That's such a good technique. When your witness is being super rude, put it on the record. Great job. Great job. You just made a comment to me. Sustain. Great job. I don't care. Great job. The jury's not going to forget that. You didn't that. call the police that night to report that Travis Rudolph uh, threw you, picked you up by your feet and slammed you to the ground two times, committing a battery on you, right? No. Um, you were battered though, right? That's your testimony. All right. Um, your testimony is also that you were basically falsely imprisoned and held against your will. Did you call the police to tell them that? No. Okay. Instead, you drove home, right? Correct. Right. Adele Ray? Yes. And Keyshawn was there? Correct. Right. And you were crying and upset? Um, I kind of calmed down by the time I got there. All right. And you and Keyshawn had a conversation about what had happened, right? Yes. And you testified yesterday on direct examination that Keyshawn told me I was overly tripping. It's not serious. Both of us, not just me. Who? Who? Me and Travis, like, we're both overly okay. tripping. It what wasn't does overly serious. tripping mean? Just meaning in relationships, sometimes things get out of hand for no reason. Thank and you. an outsider can see better than me and him inside the relationship. Okay. So you, you, again, you told the jury that Keyshawn told you that, right? Correct. Um, so your brother is telling you basically that this wasn't that serious, right? And yeah, he was going to just go over there and speak with him. Correct was that he told you that this wasn't serious, right? I said yes. So you didn't have any I'm bruises or scratches on your face, right? No, but I did have injury. You didn't have any bruises or scratches to your arm, did you? No. You didn't have any bruises or scratches on your neck, right? No, but I did just have any bruises or scratches on your back, right? Make her answer no. your question how you want her to answer it. Good for you. Direct that witness. Lead her. You would agree, Ms. Jones, that um, you don't need to bring three men with you if you're just going to go talk to somebody? Objection. Boom. Sustained. I would overrule that. She's the one that directed the action. You testified that you were the one that told Keyshawn to go talk to him, right? Correct. So it wasn't Keyshawn saying, I'm going to go be your protector and take and take care of this. You're the one that encouraged him to go do that, you right? You egged it on. No. When I told him what happened, he he's he instantly is like, I'm gonna go holler at I'm gonna go talk to Travis. You just told this jury that it was you who told I didn't see the video, but I, if that big football player picked her up and threw her down two times, I'm expecting physical injuries. Told him to go talk to him. That's what you told this jury yesterday. That's what you just answered, and now you're changing your answer. So which I'm not I'm not changing my answer at all. Me and him had a mutual conversation, and the mutual conversation was I told him what happened. He said he was going to go speak with them, and I agreed. Yesterday, you told this jury that you're the one that told him to go talk to Travis. Like I said, it was a mutual. I, I told him to go talk to them, and he said he was going to already on his own. After you told him to go do it, right? That's what you told this jury yesterday. Uh, overall. Isn't that true? Yes. Okay. Question. Uh, not, And this is not to be shady. How did, whose education did I degrade? Whose education did I degrade? I don't remember. Tell, tell me because I'm, I'm always open to, you know, input on things like that because I don't like to do that, but I don't remember doing that. What did I say? I'm, I'm going to keep playing it. I just want to know what I said uh, so I can address that. I don't know what I said. And you gotta realize this is like live commentary, so it's not like edited or anything like that. It's just me talking off the cuff here. But I don't remember saying anything that degraded her education. I don't think so. I don't remember commenting her education, but I don't know. Tell me. After the shooting took place, um, Chris Lowe and Keyshawn FaceTimed you, isn't that correct? Correct. And that FaceTime call was made before you got to the hospital and gave your statement to Detective Ema. Yeah, you could just remember? Tell me. No, I was already at the hospital when they called me. But that call was made before you gave your statement to Detective Ema. Correct. So before you gave your first sworn statement to law enforcement, you had already spoken with Chad Lowe and your brother about what happened, right? 
incorrect the conversation was more of him crying saying he thinks sebastian died it wasn't it was more of an emotional conversation it wasn't a sit down and let's discuss exactly what happened well they told you that sebastian had died right correct and they told you that uh tyler told you he had a gun right Hmm? i'm sorry i'm not understanding your question didn't you also become aware that tyler robbins real quick sorry uh so no i wasn't talking about her level of education it's inappropriate for, she's not the she's not the attorney. Even if she was an attorney, she is not the attorney in this situation. It has nothing to do with her level of education. It's her role in the trial. It is not appropriate for her to be making objections. She said things like, that's hearsay. That's argumentative, as though she is in the role of the attorney. She's trying to take over. And that's not what she should do. She should allow the prosecutor to do her job and make her objections. And she's also muddling the record. Because the way that it's going to work out is that there will be a transcript made of this if he's convicted of anything. And that transcript will have to go up to the appellate court and they'll have to review all of those objections and all the rulings on the objections. And they have to be heard clearly. So there can't be any crosstalk over them in order for the record to be preserved. So what she's doing is really, really wrong. I'm not talking about her level of education. I would say that if that was a doctor sitting there, if that was another lawyer sitting there, I would say you're not the lawyer is probably the better way to put it, but that's not her role for her to do that. She's being inappropriate. And I wasn't talking about her level of education, but thank you for pointing that out. If you guys ever think that I'm like being degrading towards someone, because that's never my intention to do that. And I always want to make sure that I correct for things like that. But I promise you, that's not what I was doing. And that's totally cool that you pointed that out, by the way. Then had a gun that night with him at that point. Not at that moment, no. So they only told you that Sebastian died and you didn't ask, oh my God, how, what happened? Tell me what, how uh, this could have occurred. It was an emotional moment. They're at a, they're speaking with law enforcement. I'm at the hospital with Tyler's mom. There's not really much conversation on the table to discuss what happened. You know, one person's dead. You know, another person's wounded. Correct. You're not curious or asking questions about how this happened. No, I am. I called Daryl. Who? DJ. Travis's brother. I called him. I'm not talking about DJ. Right. But you're asking me if I was curious. So I said, yes, I was. I called the person who I called. I'm curious when you were speaking with Chris Lowe and Keyshawn is my question. No, because they were emotional. They're crying. They're, they're not, they're, they're distraught. They're not in the right state of mind. So I wasn't asking them personal questions like that. You've already testified that you've already, you FaceTimed with um, with your brother and Keyshawn right after the shooting, right? Well, Keyshawn's my brother, so Keyshawn and Chris. Keyshawn and Chris, yes. You are, you testified that you already FaceTimed and you already spoke about it right after the shooting, right? We didn't really speak that much about the exact shooting is what I'm trying to say. It was more of a Sebastian, he thinks Sebastian's dead, he was crying, things like that. And around 2.45 in the morning, you actually gave a, a sworn statement to a detective that was at the hospital, is that correct? Correct. And that was Detective Ema, is that right? Yes. And you didn't tell Detective Ema um, at 2.45 that morning while you were giving your sworn statement under oath, subject to perjury, that you told Keyshawn to go shoot up his shit, right? Um, I, don't I don't remember the exact, that was the very, very first thing when I ever gave him. I don't remember exactly what I said. You, you never told him about the text message to go shoot up his shit, did you? you I don't recall. Know. Of course she did it. She didn't tell anybody about that. She deleted it. She's trying to hide it. And she got caught. Did you ever tell Detective Ema that uh, Keyshawn texted you and Tyler back that Travis was a dead man walking? Do you remember ever telling him that? I don't recall. Is it true that you didn't? I don't recall. I don't believe anything. I don't even believe when she says she doesn't recall. I'm sorry. From when they caught her out saying he, he, he started it, but previously she said he didn't start it. Uh, you may. You want to show the state what's your. Of, of, of what uh, transcript? Oh, I should skip this. Thank you. I'm so like into it. I'm forgetting. I should skip this. <laughs> More impeachment. Lines. 
17, 13. Sorry, I'm sorry, page 129, 129. You're on page 129? Yeah. Yes. Uh, 17, please. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell she was a bad girl. Okay. Did you read that? Mm -hmm. Look over on page 130. Do you need to look at that as well? No, this is exactly what I just said to you. Um, and it's true that I was asking you questions during that statement in November uh, that are similar to the questions I just asked you now, right? About whether you shared with Detective Ema uh, the text message that you instructed. Is that objection proper impeachment? Yeah, well, technically it is, but I'm going to allow it. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I asked the question. And you didn't tell Detective Ema that you had instructed Tyler and Kuchan to go shoot up Travis's ship, right? Answer, no. Okay. Right? Yeah, the answer says no. And I said I didn't remember. I don't recall. Okay. So now you recall that? I don't yeah. Now that I'm reading it, you have to remember these. this is no, a year. No, see, she's being, I don't want this part to go over your guys' head, right? She's appropriately asking her this question at this point. And that question is, I don't remember, back up. I don't remember is an answer. Right. It's not yes. And it's not no. There's three answers without additional explanation. Yes. No. And I don't remember. Right. Her answer was, I don't remember, which is noncommittal, which doesn't give the jury anything to really assess. Right. When it comes to the, the actual fact itself, they could say, do we believe her that she doesn't remember? But when it comes to asserting the fact of whether or not she told the detective that she deleted the message, or that the, the message had been relayed or whatever the case may be, the jury doesn't have anything to assess, assess as to that. All they have is, I don't remember. But previously she said no, which is a different answer from I don't remember. So she's treating the attorney like the attorney is slow or something. I mean, that's what I said, but that's not what you said. You said, I don't remember. She has now refreshed your recollection that previously you told the officer no. Or no, not that you told the officer, no. Previously, you testified that you did not tell the officer that you had deleted the messages. Or, or two ago. Right. So my memory is a little bit more fresher back then. Okay. So if you can show me something, I have no problem owning up to it. So yes, here, I did say no. So you never told Detective Ema about the text messages. Is that correct? No, me and Detective Ema, um, I believe our conversation was extremely short. Did you tell Detective Ema that Tyler Robinson had a gun? I don't remember if I told him that or not, because I don't think I knew he had one or not at that moment. Did you tell Detective Ema that you t uh, told Linda there was going to be trouble? Mm. You remember making I don't remember. So you can refresh her recollection. Give her a page to go to. You have November 8th statement there? What yes, page? It still does. Okay, page 131. If you would look. Lines. Yeah, 20, her attitude is something fierce, man. 23. You know, there's going to be a difficulty with the state pursuing yeah, a perjury charge. Emma, I'll tell you why. You did that? Okay. Does that refresh your memory about what happened? What you said to him? There you go. That's Not really, but Keyshawn was... My question is, uh, no, it doesn't. My question was that you didn't tell Detective Ema about Linda, that you had spoken to her and that um, you told her that there was going to be trouble. Right. At this moment in time, when I'm talking to this detective, I'm just learning and finding out about everything that's going on. I might have missed a lot of details that I then Answer came forth and question. spoke about. But you're asking me nitty gritty details that at the time when I'm speaking to a detective, I'm not going to remember or recall because I'm just not finding out someone died. The details that you left out to Detective Ema were nitty gritty. I'm not saying nitty gritty, but there are details. But I'm going. I'm speaking on a death at the point when I'm talking to the detective. Someone's dead. I'm not really worried about what text I sent or what text someone else sent. When it, it came time for us to speak on that, I spoke on that, and I was someone 100 is dead. But you're the one who sent them there, and they said they you want. You're the one who sent them there to shoot up the shit. 
go shoot up his shit and someone is dead. You don't think that it's important to tell the detective that? Or you don't think that it indicates that you had a malicious intent? The fact that you didn't tell the detective that? Like you kept that to yourself for a reason. You omitted that from your statement to the detective for a reason. And what was the reason? Percent honest about everything that I had said. But during the time where I'm just finding out somebody who's very close to me has passed away, that's the least thing on my mind at the moment. She's so I'm trying rude. to figure out what's going on. was asking you very specific questions, right? Not necessarily. Okay. How going freestyle i was kind of rambling and just saying from what I, I know like has happened from the night okay well his statement started at 2 44 a.m and ended at three o'clock so it was roughly 15 minutes, 20 minutes or so. that's what i'm saying that's not really i'm 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 fine and no like, she's not she's so statement. rude he asked you a number of questions right she's so rude all right, uh, feel free to stand up and stretch, ladies and gentlemen, but please remember and obey at least three of the four cardinal rules. One She's of them is inapplicable at this point. <laughs> She's objecting to the characterization of her prior testimony. You can't mischaracterize someone's prior testimony when you're impeaching them. The, the, this attorney has made some little minor errors with the way in which she lays out the impeachment, but otherwise, excellent cross-examination. Just so good. And you can tell she's crossed her before and she doesn't like her, as in the witness doesn't like the attorney. And it's really playing in the defense's favor because she seems so combative. All right. Um, all right. Uh, so apparently there's a request for a restroom break, and that's fine. We've been at this for a while today uh, so far. Uh, Little spinning white wheel. Jury's coming in. I like how he, I bet you he works out. <laughs> I need to get back in the gym. I bet you he works out the way he stands up so much. Or maybe his back pain I like want to I take do. your seat. I wanted to say something. Uh, folks, you see probably that I have a laptop up here. Uh, I am uh, paying attention to everything that's going on. Believe you uh, me, I'm not checking the weather or sports news or anything like that. <laughs> no, he's every week home. of every year, um, one judge in Palm Beach County, um, which comprises the uh, Judicial Circuit 15 of 20 circuits within the state of Florida, is on what's known as duty uh, or duty judge. Okay, this is very interesting, this, but this, sorry, this, I need to, I, we need to go. And you've testified here that you don't remember uh, him asking you specific questions. It was more of you were just telling him everything because of your state of mind was pretty, it was pretty harried because you had just found out that Sebastian was killed and Tyler was shot, right? Correct. Is that what you told the jury? Yes. Okay. And you uh, you recall the statement being roughly 15 to 20 minutes in length? Yeah. Is that about right? Yes. Okay. So let's talk about rather than what you didn't tell him, let's talk about what you did tell him. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, during this 15 or 20 minutes, isn't it true that you told him that uh, Travis picked you up and dropped you on your back? You remember that? Correct. Okay. Um, I don't and that. isn't it also true that you told him, I'm going to have my brother come down here because you obviously need to talk. Do you remember telling him that? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. You remember telling Detective Ema, my brothers, plural, never going to come down here on some harmful anything. Do you remember telling him that? Yes. Okay. Um, do you remember telling him about your liquor bottle? Yes, I, I told him I threw the liquor bottle. Okay. And do you remember telling Detective Ema that Travis was in your face talking shit? Yes. And you were slapping him? And I don't remember that part, but I might have said that. Okay. But it did get kind of like very physical at that point. Okay. Um, and do you then remember telling Detective Ema that uh, you left and went home and told your brother uh, you got to go see about me to Travis? Remember telling Detective Ema that? Mm, kind of a blur, but I did say to go talk to him, yes. That you told your brother to go talk to him, right? Correct. That's what you told Detective Ema. That's what, yeah, if that's what that says, yes, I don't remember vividly exactly every single word I said, but if that's what I said there, then yes. You can show it to me if you want. You may. That's a copy of your sworn statement that you gave to Detective Ema. Okay. And if you would turn to page eight. Okay. 
and look at lines 22 to 25. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm like so like <laughs> enthralled. I forget I'm not watching this in real time. All right. Okay. Oh, on page eight. I'm sorry. I'm on seven. 22 through. Okay. You know, a lot of this has to do with immaturity and, and that that's not, I would have never done this at her age, but that, that's a lot of this has to do with immaturity. That's not an excuse, but it does help to kind of how something like this could happen. You could be immature at any age. Her behavior in court shows such a level of immaturity. This plan was so immature, so foolish, so stupid. You don't have an appreciation for human life when you do something like this. And look at how it turned out. Look at how it backfired. Somebody died over this foolishness. Okay, yes, I, I just read it. Do you remember telling, um, remember telling Detective Ema that when you left, you told, you went home and told your brother you got to go see about me to Travis? Um, that's exactly what it says here. Okay. But do I remember? Your question was, do I remember? Correct. Right. No, I don't. I don't remember ex our exact. That was my very, very first is talk it, with anyone. Isn't that true that you told Detective Ema that? Your ask, your question was, do I remember? I'm asking you, isn't it true that you told Detective Ema that? I don't remember speak, saying this. Stop I'm gonna be it. honest. I remember. Stop it. Look at what she's doing, trying to get out of what she previously said. No, I don't remember. But you're being you're you're being impeached with what you previously said. And if she denies that she said it, right? Because she's not answering the question. It's not the question is not do you remember? It's did you say? It's a different type. It's not refreshing recollection. It's impeachment with the prior inconsistent statement. If she denies it, she can then introduce the statement into evidence. The, the uh, defense attorney can. If she admits it and just adopts that she previously said that, that's the end of the inquiry. But if she says, I don't remember saying that, she's not answering the question either way. And the defense attorney really cannot move on until the judge instructs her to do so because she can't just drop that she has this inconsistent statement. Um, that's exactly what it says here. But do I remember your question was, do I remember? Correct. Right. No, I don't. I don't remember ex our exact. That was my very, very okay. first. Well, she did say that's what, that's what it says. Talk here. with anyone. Isn't that true that you told Detective Ema that? Your, ask, your question was, do I remember? I'm asking you, isn't it true that you told Detective Ema that? I don't remember speak, saying this. I'm going to be honest. Now. I remember telling him that I told him to go talk to him, which is on the page previous to this. You're not disagreeing that you gave a sworn statement. I'm not disagreeing at all. I just don't remember. You asked me if I remembered. I said no. But she asked You're a different question. What's in there is not correct, right? No. Okay. She's so. You combative. remember telling the detective again? This we're talking about what you told him. You remember telling Detective Ema um, that without being asked as a question, my brother is uh, licensed to carry. Do you remember that? Um, I probably did tell him that. Right. Just so like she right, tried to tell the jury that. Back to tell him, right? Just for the simple fact that I found out there was a shooting, yes, I believe I need to leave. That be important if your brother didn't have a gun. Why did you want Detective Ema to know Ooh. that Keyshawn had a concealed weapons permit? I wanted him to know because there was a shooting. Right, because your brother took his gun with him. No. That's why you where, show me where my brother took his gun with him. Show it to me. Oh, she is hot. Oh, my God. I believe completely that she started that physical confrontation. She is so, what's the word that I'm looking for? Volatile? She's volatile. She's like a bottle of Coke and a Mentos. You just drop it in there and she just goes off. Show me where I said that. She was in there whooping ass. You know it. She can barely control her anger here on the stand. No. That Keyshawn had a concealed weapons permit. And the, oh, sorry. And don't let the question be lost on you. It's such a good question. The jury doesn't have to accept that she didn't know that her brother was armed because we don't know for sure that the brother was armed. She's implying the brother was armed because the witness previously told the detective out of nowhere without any prompting. My brother has a concealed carry. So you at least thought your brother was armed. I wanted him to know because there was a shooting. 
Because your brother took his gun with him. No. That's why you where, show me where my brother took his gun with him. Show it to me. Questions. But you're telling me something that I'm, you're asking me a question. I'm letting you know my answer. So if you don't have proof right in front of my face, then you can't sit here and tell me anything. I'm telling you. Okay, enough. Next question. Exactly. Next question. Stop. Oh! Next question, like the, is this how you talk to Travis? Stop. This is how I'm talking to Next you. Next question. This is terrible for the prosecution. Terrible for the prosecution. Oh my gosh. She is a horrible witness. This is who's this is who the lead detective said. I just trusted her version of events. I didn't look any further after I found out she lied to me. This is who. I'm telling you. Okay, enough. Next question. Exactly. Next question. Ooh. Stop. The next question, please. Like the, is this how you talk to Travis? Stop. This is how I'm talking the to next you. Next question. Didn't you also tell Detective Enoch that I can't your brother her. got to Travis's house, he said, I'm not here to start nothing with you. I'm here to talk. You remember telling Detective Ema that? Correct. So your brother did give you some details about what happened. No, before he left the house, he told me he was going over there to speak with him. Right. But you told Detective Ema that your brother said uh, to Travis, Travis, I'm, I'm not here to start nothing with oh. you. I'm here to talk. So you did have details about what happened more than Sebastian was dead and that uh, Tyler was shot, like you told the jury or implied. Isn't that true? I said, I don't recall all of the details that were said that day, night. I was more concerned about Sebastian being dead. All right. Didn't you also tell Detective Ema that the Travis ran out of the house and trucked my brother? Sustained. Next question. Is it true that you told Detective Ema that Travis ran out of the house and hit your brother? Um, I don't remember. Okay, if you look at page 11, please. Mm -hmm. The objection was based on the form of impeachment. She can't say, and you said, quote, no, isn't it true that you said this? Yes or no? And then she can say, yes, no, or I don't remember. If she doesn't remember, then she can point her to where she can refresh her recollection, which is what she's doing now. Lines three through five. She's horrible. Nisa, yes. She said Nisa works for teens, and this is a teenager's attitude. Absolutely. And like I said, not an excuse. She's a grown woman, just an explanation. Yeah. Immaturity. Okay, I'm ready. Isn't it true that your brother said that he ran out and trucked him? Yes. He told Detective Ema. So, but, all, isn't that true? Yes. Okay. Good. And isn't it true that you also told Detective Ema that he was with his friends? Yes. So, you knew while you were at the hospital that his friends were with him. When After I spoke to Daryl, because he said his dreadhead friend is dead. You spoke, you already testified that you spoke with, with Chris and with Keyshawn. I spoke to them after I spoke to Travis and Daryl. But you're saying that that's how you found out about that was from, from Travis, from who? Daryl, DJ, his brother. Darryl. They were naming, like, that. they were saying that light-skinned nigga. They were saying the nigga with the dreads. So that's when I'm starting to understand, like, more people came rather than my brother because my brother doesn't have dreads. Well, can you explain to the jury how it was that you just told the jury that your brother told you that I'm not here to start nothing with you. I'm here to talk. Yeah, there, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that we didn't have a discussion on the phone. And I don't want to. Um, that's what I'm trying to let the jury that's understand. I'm not saying there wasn't a discussion over the phone. Was it a detailed discussion about what exactly happened that night? No, the conversation was not that long. Is my point that I'm trying to get across to you? She this isn't a detailed. What I'm reading, this is not detailed at all. Well, this is your detail that you gave to Detective Ema. Which is very minimal because that's all I know. That's what I'm saying. When we talked on the phone. Talk about what you know. that's okay. Through, okay. Cool. <laughs> you told Detective Ema also cool. that it wasn't like uh, that uh, your brother came in there with a gun and tried to start something. You remember that? Correct. Again, you brought up Keyshawn and his gun, right? Look at page 11, please. Lines 14 to 16. It's not really proper. She didn't say she didn't remember or no. Yes, I said, you're, initi you're initiating the fight. You're jumping on my brother. He came there to have a conversation with you. He doesn't sound like he came there with his gun because I knew he didn't have a gun. That's why I said that. Okay. 
So you talked about Keyshawn and the lack of not having a gun, right? All right. Okay. Because now I'm figuring out there's a shooting. And you also told Detective Ema that uh, Tyler and Sebastian, who are your brother's best friends, had gotten shot, right? Correct. And then um, you remember you remember Detective Ema asking you how you had so much detail and knew so much? I said I spoke with them. They called me briefly. They were crying. It was a very short conversation. Sure, but you do remember that. And I also spoke with Daryl and I also spoke with Travis. So do you remember Detective Ema questioning you about why you knew so much details at an event that you weren't at? Mm. No, because they're reporting back to you. Refresh her recollection. Lines twelve through. They're reporting back to you. She's the mastermind. They're reporting back to her what happened. Sixteen. Wow. Yes. Isn't it true that he asked you? And how how do you know all of this? Your answer. I just spoke with my brother. Do you remember that? And did I not tell you already previously that he told me Sebastian was dead on the phone? This says, read the entire line. And then Sebastian is pronounced dead at this moment. And how do you know all of this? I just spoke with my brother. And before that, there was a lot of discussion about all the details that you and I just discussed before this jury. Minimal details. They're, they're not, they were very minimal details. Do you remember telling Detective Ema that none of your She's brother's so uh, friends and your brother, were, they weren't answering their phones? Do you remember telling him that? Cuts. Whoa, Deacon Fatal, exactly. Exactly. It sounds like a hit. That's what it sounds like. Remember telling Detective Ema going into details about um, a text message that Tyranny Coleman sent you? Mm -hmm. yes. 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 And isn't it true that you actually showed uh, a screenshot of one of the text messages that Ms. Coleman sent you to Detective Ema? You had it on your phone and you showed it to him. Remember that? Yes. And that was the only text message that you showed Detective Ema. Isn't that a fact? Um, because I believe the context of the conversation was about that. So, so that's again, a fact, yes. The only text message you showed Detective Ema in your sworn statement was one text message from Tierney Coleman. Is that correct? Correct. And the reason you did that was you were trying to portray. No, the oh, reason. Let me finish my question. Is it a question or is it an assumption? Whoa. All right, just wait for the question, please, Miss Jones. My question is. That's the only text you showed to the detective, right? Yes. You already answered that one. Thank you. Next question. You never, asked him, you never showed him a text from one that you sent about shoot his shit up or drop this is a dead man walking, right? Not until the next day when I was asked or whenever day I was asked. Well, I'm talking about Detective Ema now. Right. Right after. Exactly. Right after everything has occurred. You have to understand I'm not in the right state of mind either. I'm just finding out someone passed away. I'm finding out my mom's car shot up. I'm finding out a lot of things at this moment. A lot of details are going to be left out. Well, maybe you shouldn't have sent people to go shoot up Travis Rudolph shit then. If it's so stressful for you that someone got killed, maybe you shouldn't have sent armed people out to an armed person's house. Someone you knew had firearms. She knew it. And she sent people to his house to shoot up his shit, knowing he has firearms. She set up the people that went out there and she set up Travis. Tragedy all around. And this is just my opinion. In my opinion. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. All right. Your mom's car. May I approach the witness room? You may. I'm sure the state knows what you're doing. Yes, but... All right. They're going off of the fake information that he slammed you on the ground two times. And your brother says it's not that big of a deal, but you push him to go out there. He goes out there with his friends and someone dies. Horrible. That's Remember looking at that yesterday and being asked questions about it? Yeah, but honestly, I'm not really sure exactly what this is. Well, you answer questions. Oh, these are my phone. Oh, these are my phone records. Okay. Okay. All right, you want to just take a look at them? Mm hmm You're familiar with that, right? I wish he would admonish her too. He's admonishing with the what? attorney more than he well, is. Well, you just said those are your phone records, right? Your phone log, right? Yeah. I'm starting, I'm realizing that now because I'm seeing numbers that I know. But you know what it is as well, I think, with this judge, and I, I still really like this judge. What I think it is is that he's letting her testimony speak for itself. He doesn't, it's just like the state has to deal, the prosecution has to deal with the type of witness that they called. And if she's going to be this combative, that's their problem. And the defense has to stick to the rules of evidence, the way in which they ask the questions, no matter what 
the witness says, because you have to deal with the questions that you ask and the responses that are generated. Some judges will control the court a bit more, but some judges want to be clear that they're not taking sides. So I wish he would control her a bit more, but by him not controlling her, how ridiculous she is and untrustworthy she is, is coming across to the jury even more. In my opinion, it's even more beneficial to the defense. I don't know how this case is going to turn out. This gentleman could very well be convicted. That is the um, risk of being involved in the criminal justice system. Once you're charged with a crime, you know, there's just no knowing what is going to happen. Anything could happen. But if the defense is successful here, I think it'll be off of the back of cross-examinations such as these. So, okay, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. All right. And that call log, if you look at the first page or second page, rather, look at the very top, you see where there's some dates? Yeah. Okay. And that call log begins on April 8th of 2021. Is that correct? Right. Okay. And that's the beginning of that call log. Is that right? I believe so. Was there anything pre preceding that page? No. Okay. You go to the end of that call the last page. Okay. And tell me what, where that call log ends. What's the last date? Af of everything? The very last entry. What was the date? 4-4-2021. Four, four, that? May I approach the You may. Is this not the last page? Yeah, that out of order. Yeah. Four, four. It's actually the last page, and then up to four. Yeah, you guys had it out of order. Got it? Yeah, I have it. So yes, like I said, the last entry is four, four, two thousand twenty-one. So the last page starts on April fourth. Is that correct? Of correct. Twenty-one, mm -hmm. and it goes through what date? Or no, not mm -hmm. eight. Okay, and you've testified that you spoke with Linda Rudolph. Is that correct? Um, yes. And isn't it true that Ms. Rudolph's phone number is nowhere in that call log? Let me take a look for a sec. Wait, whose phone number is nowhere in the car log? Where are we going with this? I'm confused. Oh, people think the judge... No, I don't see her number. You also testified to the jury that you called... Um, Linda Rudolph, is that correct? That's the same question. Same question. Coleman, excuse me, Miss Coleman, you remember stop, that? Stop, stop doing yes, that. Yes, I spoke with both of them. That, yeah, that's the same question you just asked me. Let the attorney do her job. Stop talking over the prosecutor. Stop it. Okay, and can you tell Jenny Coleman, asked excuse me, Miss Coleman, you remember that? Yes, I spoke with both of them. Okay, and can you tell us where Miss Coleman's number is on your call log that you turned into the police? Oh. When I was asked, it's not there. It's not there. That's all I asked. It's not on there. Okay. So did you delete those? No. When I asked to turn my phone in, I turned my phone in. So how did these numbers disappear from your call? Why don't you go ask the police officers? Are they just Yo, this girl is saying she called people. Oh, yeah, I cared. I called these people. I was concerned. I called these people. But their call, their phone numbers are not in the call logs. And she's asking a very reasonable question. Why aren't they in the call logs? You deleted other things. Did you delete these, fo these phone calls? No, I didn't. Well, why aren't they there? Why don't you ask the police? Are you suggesting that the police tampered with evidence in this case? The You're a prosecution witness trying to say that the prosecution's key witnesses, the police, tampered with evidence in the case? Is that what you're trying to say? Are you undermining the state's own case for them? This is wild to me. One more time. Oh, no. Okay. So did you delete those? No. When I asked to turn my phone in, I turned my phone in. So how did these numbers disappear from your call? Why don't you go ask the police officers or the detectives? Your phone. I'm asking you if you deleted those. I didn't. And I answered your question. So you didn't delete them. I didn't delete those phone calls between Tierney and I didn't delete those phone calls between his mother. You would have to ask law enforcement. You got a different phone over to the detective Vanderlyn? What different phone do I have? My question to you is, did yes, you no. turn the phone over that was your phone that you were using on April 6th to Detective Vanderland, or did you go out and buy another phone and give her that phone? You have your evidence all mixed up. I had that phone prior when I was talking to Travis. Okay. 
So the phone that I turned in, you, you're asking me a question, I'm answering. It was the same phone. It was the exact same phone. Tell us how there are the items missing from the call log. The I, I, that would have to be taken up with law enforcement. You have no idea. When I turned my phone in, everything that was in my phone and things that weren't there, I spoke on. Okay. Do you guys believe her? Or the other implication is that she didn't call these people. She either didn't call them or she deleted the call log because it's not in her phone records. Now you testified, may I approach? You may. You testified yesterday. Oh yeah. That the very next day you turned your phone over to the detective. You remember that? I don't know if it was the very next day. It was when I was asked. Well, according to your testimony yesterday, you said. Well, the, the objection is improper impeachment or improper question. Um, so rephrase, please. Didn't you tell, didn't you say that you turned your phone over to the detective the next day? When the detective asked me to turn my phone in, that's when I turned it in. I don't know the exact day. You may. I'm showing you what's in Martha's offense number eight. Thank you. Oh. Seven. Thank you. Oh. For Do you recognize this? Yep. What is this? Um, I had to sign that in order to turn my phone in. Well, let me make this big. Uh, search form. Correct. And this is your name down here on the lower right. Mm -hmm. Is that a Ooh, yes. they got it and my signature. Up. Your signature. And can you tell us what date this is? 4.15. Oh, they, they have this all blown up. I haven't done one of these exhibits in a long time because I usually just blow it up on the projector. They got this all blown up. Oh, they're ready. Yes, and my signature. Is that your signature? And can you tell us what date this is? 4.15. So April 15th of 2021? Correct. The incident occurred on April 6th of 2021? That has no recollection for me. You have to understand that. When they asked me to turn my phone in, that's when I turned my phone in. Okay, so the, you, you actually signed the consent to search on April 15th, 2021. Is that correct? Correct. Any objection? All right, very well. It's submitted into evidence. Now, you know, in, in the event that there's a review um, by the 4th District Court of Appeal in this case, those... Those particular exhibits have to be down to, uh, yeah, okay, you understand that. We have to physically. They're not going to be transported in that format. Yes, All right, thanks. Or no, or, or they're going to have to, oh, take a picture so and make it smaller. That was okay. signed by you several days after the incident, right? Document. Right. And then you turned your phone in the following day after you signed that and you sent your friend uh, Paloma to do that, right? So you had time to delete knowing you were going to turn your phone over to law enforcement. And hey, this is just for future reference, guys. Hopefully you're never involved in a criminal uh, investigation or even a civil uh, litigation. If the police uh, want your phone for any reason or they get a warrant for your phone or after consulting with your attorney, you decide to turn over your phone to the police. Again, don't do that without consulting with an attorney. But and, um, you know, you decide it's prudent for you to turn over your phone to the police. Maybe you're trying to help find a missing person or something. I don't know. Anyway, you do that. You give them permission to search your phone or they have a warrant. If you do anything to tamper with your phone, it can more than likely be evident on the phone itself. They have cell phone extractions these days that can see whether or not something was deleted. And many times that deleted thing can be recovered. So word to the wise, if your phone is going to be intercepted by law enforcement, do not tamper with it. Don't don't ever you know tamper with evidence. Don't tamper with it because it will look worse probably than the thing that you're actually trying to delete. And then they may see the thing you're trying to trying to delete anyway. All right. Now you didn't turn your phone over to the de detective directly. You sent a friend. Right. And the reason you did that was you didn't want to be interviewed by the detective. Isn't that true? No, I was already previously interviewed by yeah. her. By Detective Ema. We've talked about that. Exactly. But the phone was being turned over to the lead detective in the case, Detective Vanderlyn. Isn't that correct? Right. Wow. And you never went to see Detective Vanderlyn. Yeah. You sent your friend instead, right? Oh, there it is. Right? My friend turned the phone in. Yeah, you said yes. asked me this already, and I've answered yes. My friend turned the phone in. Right. And you told the jury yesterday the reason you had your friend do it is because she lived closer. Correct. To the detective than you did, right? Correct. You lived in Delray at the time. Right. Detectives in West Palm Beach, right? Right. It's about a 20 minute car ride. Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. You had a car, right? You had a car back then. Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. You couldn't drive 20 minutes to drop your phone off to the detective? It wasn't 20 minutes from my house, though. 
How many minutes was it? About 40. From Delray to West Palm? She was somewhere further. It was far from my house. It was traffic time. So I just get, had to give it, gave it to my friend the night before, and she just turned it in after work. Okay. That's all it was. So your testimony that the detective told you that you had to come during a specific time, that was traffic time? Is that your testimony? She didn't say it had to be come a specific time. I came when I gave my phone when I was ready to give it to her. You could have gone any time. There wasn't a specific time set during traffic time, right? What's the question? That's my question. Don't you understand? No. You could have dropped that phone off any time. The detective didn't say you had to come during a specific time. Is that correct? Lisa, I, don't I dropped my phone off when she asked me to drop the phone off. You didn't. Paloma did. Correct. Do you remember um, there being some discussion yeah. yesterday about text messages with um, Daryl, DJ? You remember that? Correct. You remember um, you said on direct examination, I didn't know anybody went with Keyshawn to, his, to uh, Travis's house. You remember that? I said that yesterday. You sure did. Do you remember that? Ty Tyler, I know I ain't. That's it. No, you said yesterday, I didn't know anyone went with Keyshawn. Do you remember telling the jury that? You were trying to um, imply. There was a whole line of questioning about this. Sustain. You testified yesterday that you didn't learn about all this until you were speaking with DJ. You remember that? That's what you told this jury. O overruled. Over. Answer, the question. Answer the question, please. I'm, I'm confused. Okay, well, let's try to unconfuse you. Start, yeah, let's start over. You guys, hold on. All right, go ahead. You remember, you remember telling the jury yesterday when, when, when the state was asking you questions about DJ's text? Mm. You guys mm. texting back and forth? Okay, that's what you're talking about, yes. Yeah. And then you told this jury that the first time you heard about all of this and that there were more people that went there besides Keyshawn was when you were talking and communicating with DJ. Wait, I, but prior to this, you have to remember me, Keyshawn, and Tyler were in a group chat. Remember, you said that out of your own mouth. You also just testified that there was a FaceTime. You told Detective Ema details about your brothers going there. Don't you remember you just testified about that? She's chronologically way out of order. All right. She's just like Let's chatting right now. Start over. What are you Let's saying? You are. Like, I don't even understand. All right, stop, Ms. Jones. Wow. All right, next question. Start over again so we can get this cleared up and move on. Your Honor, though, can I say something? No, stop. No. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, my God. She is well so before you spoke to DJ and those text messages that your brother and his friends went over to Travis's house, right? No. You said yesterday that you began to understand who came to the Rudolph residence after and you spoke with DJ or during the time you were speaking with DJ. You remember that? No. Isn't it true that you texted Keyshawn, Sebastian, and Tyler in a group text at 11.44 p.m., on April 6th, where are you all at? Can I see? I'm just asking you. Do you remember I, that? No, I don't recall that. Okay. Do you remember Tyler sending you a... Objection. Well, this is a different question now. It's a different right, question. Go ahead. Overall, um, overall, go ahead. Yeah. Isn't it a fact that it's Tyler sent a text right. back to you, you Keyshawn, down. and Sebastian right. at 1144 on April 6th? We're on our way right now, RN, right now. Do you remember that? You remember that text, responsive no. reply text, excuse me. All right, next question. Isn't it true that Tyler sent you, Sebastian, and Keyshawn? Do you remember whether? This is okay. the proper way to ask that question. Do you remember whether Tyler sent you, Sebastian, and Keyshawn a group text at 1144 a.m.? And that text saying, I love you so much, I got you. Do you remember that? No. Do you remember a text at 1144 uh, that you sent in a group text to Sebastian, Tyler, and Keyshawn? Your response was, okay. Do you remember that? No. Okay. Do you remember a text at 1016 that evening, before the other text that I just read, that Tyler sent to you saying, send me his address? Do you remember that? No. Do you remember at 1017 that you sent Tyler Robinson a text that said 550 Teat Drive. Do you remember that? No. Okay. Do you remember at 1021 p.m. on the evening of April 6th, sending Tyler a text that you where you said, tell Keyshawn come on. Do you remember that? No. At 1024 p.m. that night, do you remember sending Tyler a text? Okay, you here? Do you remember that? No. And after the shooting took place, even which was approximately midnight, do you remember at 1258 after the shooting that you sent a group text to Keyshawn, Sebastian, and Tyler? Call. 
Now. You knew well, before you spoke to D before you spoke to Daryl DJ that that group of men were together and that they were at at uh, Travis's house. Did you not? I knew Keyshawn and Tyler were together. I didn't know Sebastian was there. She knew everything. I don't believe her. It sounds like from the text. And you're not just trying to distance yourself, right? From this is myself from what? Well, you didn't want anyone to know that you were communicating with them because you didn't want to get in trouble. You get in trouble want... for what? Well. You could have been in trouble for setting this whole thing up and setting this in motion. Weren't you concerned? Setting what up? Your client shot 84 rounds. There was no shots back. What did I set up? Well, you sent somebody to go shoot him, didn't you? Did he get shot? You sent oh. somebody to shoot him, did you not? Did he get shot? All right, Miss Jones. Shoot him, didn't you? Shut up. Your Her nonchalance is so disturbing, girl. People got killed. What are you saying right now? Client shot 84 rounds. There was no shots back. What did I set up? Well, you sent somebody to go shoot him, didn't you? Did he get shot? You sent somebody to shoot him, did you not? Did he get shot? All right, Miss Jones, you had to answer the questions, not ask them. All right, next question. But she didn't answer the question, and you didn't force her to answer the question. You could have directed her to answer the question, and that's kind of emboldening her now. And she's just thwarting, thwarting the process. She's not answering anything. But the ultimate result is that she just looks like a combative, nasty, rude liar who would do something like set up her brother to go and kill her, her boyfriend. That's what she looks like now. She does not come across well at all. She comes across horribly. Okay. And someone died for this. On April 6th, at 10.24 p.m. before the shooting, do you remember oh, no. Tyler calling you? No. Do you remember seeing that call on your phone extraction, states number 17? If I can't see any evidence in front of me, this happened two years ago. I don't remember. So I mean, you're going to keep receiving the, I'm not trying to. You may. Good for you for not responding to her nastiness and her combativeness. All right, and you've provided Ms. Jones with what? I just provided her with state 17, which is her phone log. Thank you. Okay, so what was the question? You remember Tyler calling you at 1024 p.m. on April 6th. That's because I'm getting tired. Oh, well, do you remember or do you not? I'm looking through the... Okay, but... <laughs> Thank you. The ju Okay, judge. Okay, judge. Come on. I can't speed it up because I, I got to get... Well, I already had it sped up, but I have to take it to 1.25 because she makes a lot of little noises that kind of get lost and I have to hear remember. it. Remember... Tyler calling you at 1024 p.m. on April 6th. Oh, do you remember or do you not? I'm looking through the... Okay, but... You have to answer whether or not you remember first before you can refresh your recollection. <laughs> now the your question is, do you judge. remember now without the looking question through is, I have to look. You're arguing with the judge! Oh, do you remember or do you not? I'm looking through the... Okay, but... <laughs> The question is, do you remember now without looking through anything? The question is, I have to look first. All right, so you don't remember. Is no, that right? I have to look to see exactly the time. It shows you more than just somebody calling you. All right, well, if you're all right with that, I'm all right with it. Okay, I don't remember. Okay. Okay. I'm going to get into that. See? I don't remember. My question is, do you see? No. You don't even know my question, so how are you answering no? Do I see the conversation of Tyler calling me? No. Not a conversation, a call on no. your phone log. No, I don't no. see it. Okay. Do you no. remember at 10.15? She's making my blood pressure rise. She's so rude. She's getting rude and combative with the judge. She's rude and combative with the defense attorney. She's speaking over the prosecutor. You mean to tell me when in the privacy of Tyler's um, home, um, excuse me, Travis Rudolph's home, she wasn't starting that physical confrontation? I don't believe it for a second. Look at how c combative she is here. This is so concerning to me. 52, oh Tyler calling you. No. Do you know if that's on your call log? Who? That call. Do you see a call on your call log at 1052 from Tyler? No. Okay. She, do you remember? She, and let's see, say why, in my opinion, she's upset because she's getting caught in her life. Tyler calling you, excuse me, that you call Tyler at 1058 p.m. before the shooting. I speak to them all the time, so I don't remember. I'm asking you if there's a call on your call log that reflects that. No, that isn't what you asked her. You asked her if she remembers. Do you remember 
And I said, no. Okay. And now take a look at that and tell me if you can see a call that you made to Tyler Robinson at 1058. I don't even know his number anymore. I don't see. So no, I'm going to say no. Well, do you see anything in there that reflects Tyler? You got Tyler's name in his phone as what? In your phone. What, what was he in your phone as? Tell the um, jury, please. I don't even see it. I think no, was... what, what did you, how did you have him as his, your contact? What was his name in your phone? Didn't you just hear me say I don't see it? No, I'm asking you what you how you saved his name in your phone. What was his I name? don't remember. It might have been Ty Ty, but I don't see it here. You're still in touch with him, right? So you don't know how you put him in your phone? Is that you have to be specific now. You're being you're, you're using the She's asked a, a compound question there. That's two questions at once. She has to do one at, at the time. One at a time. So judge is right. But also judge, you know. Give her some leeway. This is such a combative witness. It's hard to ask witnesses like this questions. Present tense or the past tense? I can't okay. tell. Ms. Perlet. Okay. Uh, 1015. And I want to give kudos to this defense attorney here where there are moments I would be frustrated right now. And she is not taking the bait. She's just plowing forward, staying in her chapters, moving from section to section. She has her um, impeachment ready to go. She knows her record and she's just keeping cool, calm and collected. I, I really have to give her credit for that. Nine, a minute later Great on job. April 6th, do you remember calling Tyler? No. Okay. Another call at 1059 on April 6th. Do you remember calling Tyler? No. At 1220 after the shooting, now, April 7th, do you remember calling Tyler? No. At 1223 on April 7th, do you remember calling Tyler? No. 1238, do you remember calling Tyler? No. 129 in the morning. Do so these are deleted then. She's looking at, uh, I'm the implication I'm getting is that you're looking at other records that show that she called Tyler all these times but they're not in her phone log. Do you remember calling Tyler? No. 131 in the, mem in the morning, do you remember calling Tyler? No. Now with respect to those questions, can you tell me if you, by looking at that document, if you see any of those calls on there that we just discussed? I don't remember his um, number at the time, so I, I can't tell you. And again, you don't know what you say, right? At the time, sometimes he changes, he's, you're going to say someone's number as whatever you're going to save them as. Brandon is always going to be what I call him, you know, as a nickname in my phone. It's always going to be that. Mommy is always going to be mommy. Auntie is always going to be auntie. Joey is always going to be Joey. The Tracy is always going to be Tracy. The people I know and love in my life, their names are going to be the same whether they change their phone number or not. So I don't believe that she doesn't know what name she saved it under. It's probably Ty Ty, like she let slip before, and it's not in there. I'm getting what she's, I wasn't understanding the prosecution so much before because of all the confusion, but now I get it. She made all these calls. The calls are probably on the other people's phones, but she's deleted the call logs and they're not there anymore. She was, get, they were keeping her abreast of the entire situation. She's the mastermind. She planned the whole thing. And the reason that she deleted the, the messages and the phone logs and everything else is because she wanted to cover up her role in trying to set up Travis to get killed. Change your number. So if he changed his number, I might not have saved it at the time. So no, I can't see his name right now. So there were some text messages that we already have in evidence between you and Tyler and a third party that have Tyler's name on them. So on April 6th, he was named. So Sustained. <clears throat> Stand up and stretch, folks, but uh, obey the cardinal rules while you're doing that. Mm -mm. All right, let's skip a bit. <clears throat> so, you recall seeing some text messages between yourself, Tyler, and your brother? During the course of this trial? Yes. Okay. And th those mm -hmm. phone messages, I believe, were actually from Keyshawn's phone. Is that correct? Um, correct. Okay. And do you know what Keyshawn called or had his contact saved for Tyler Robinson? No. And you don't remember what you, how you saved Tyler Robinson in your phone, correct? Because he gets new numbers. So, no, I don't remember. So, he gets new numbers? Yeah. Some, like, some, like normal people. He's, if he changed his number, sometimes I might not save it. Okay. So, since this incident, he's changed his number. Is that your testimony? 
That's not my testimony. I said people change numbers and sometimes they don't get resaved. That's my testimony. So you don't know whether he changes number liar. or not, correct? No, I do not. Okay. I can't. She's such a liar. I cannot even. That is not believable at all that that's why his number isn't showing up in your phone. You may. Okay, thank you. No, it is eight. Seven is the big over oversized uh, consent form. Yes. <laughs> Showing what's been admitted to evidence of states number eight. Take a look at that, please. I'm just going to remove that. You can change your number, but okay. You familiar with this search history? Yeah, it's my search history for my cell phone. Your search history from your cell phone, right? Right. And the first page, it starts on April 7th of 2021. Is that correct? Correct. Right. And the very last page concludes at April 15th of 2021. Is that correct? Correct. Right. Okay. If you look at the first page, are you on the first? You need another moment to look. I'm on the first page. Go ahead. Okay. Sorry. No, no problem. So at on April 7th, that's 641, I believe it is. You see that, the, that entry? It's about um, a quarter of the way down on the page. Stand your ground law. Right. You researched on your cell phone, stand your ground law. Is that correct? Right. On eight, and that was at 641 in the morning, right? Yes, after everything happened. Right. A couple of hours after you spoke to Detective Ema, right? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Um, the same day on 4 7 21, um, at 6 41 in the morning, you also searched stand your ground law in Florida. Is that correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. On 4 7 at 9 01, you searched death penalty in Florida. Is that correct? Correct. Right. Mm. On 4 8 of 2021, you searched accessory to murder. Is that correct? Right. Oh my God. Did you think? Why were you, you interested were in that? The murder. I'm searching on my phone like normal people do when they get into uncomfortable situations. Well, when you searched up that term, accessory to murder, what did you learn? I didn't really learn that much. Okay. I wasn't really looking too hard into it. I just was. I've never been in a situation like this. I just was looking. Well, what, literally. What does that mean, accessory to murder? I don't know. You're the lawyer. You tell me. So you're the one that said you wanted to go to law school, right? I'm a realtor. Ooh, do you have a, you do you have a college realtor. degree? No, I have a real estate license. Okay. So on and why does that matter? On April 8th of 2021 at 1059, oh, you searched up self-defense in Florida. Is that correct? Correct. And then on April 8th at 1059, you searched self-defense, correct? Correct. And that was only um, a day after this incident, correct? Correct. Mm -mm -mm. And then on April 12th at 5.35 p.m., you searched Florida, strand, Florida Stand Your Ground. Is that correct? Right. Mm -mm -mm. And then on April 13th um, at 10.39, you searched Mark Shiner Attorney Net Worth. Do you remember that? Yes. Oh. Why, why were you looking at Mr. Shiner's net worth? Because I just knew um, Travis's financials. And I knew he couldn't afford, so I was just curious. Okay, but what does Mr. Shiner's net worth have to do with Travis affording a lawyer? Because I heard he hired him, so I was curious. I heard he was hired, so I was curious. Okay. I'm allowed to search okay. anything on my phone. It's not illegal. Okay. <laughs> on April 13th wow. at 10.51, you searched um, best Our prosecuting attitude. attorney, Palm. Remember that, Palm Beach? Okay. That, you remember that? Uh -huh. Is that a yes? Yes. Then you searched on April 13th. Um, you have to remember now at this point, a lot of these aren't just my searches. People are tell, asking me questions and I'm in, using my phone to find girl, certain things. Girl, get out of here. Yeah, I was just doing research for people because remember I wanted to be a lawyer. So, and I was involved in this case and I was just really, really curious and people just wanted to ask me things. It wasn't me that was looking these things up. Child, please. Things, the beginning ones, okay, yes, these definitely were me. But oh, these are other people using your phone now? They're not using my phone. That we're in, having conversations and I'm typing it into my phone. It's not just me sitting there typing all this every single day. You're having discussions with your friends about self-defense in Florida, right? 
not necessarily about self-defense about the entire situation well you just said that you some of these things weren't necessarily you your friends were talking to you and you were We're just having an open you know when you have an open discussion and you might yourself just type something in your phone no one's telling me to type anything no one's forcing me to and i'm just having open discussions with people and i'm typing it in on my own on my phone i understand you're typing it but Mm -hmm. your testimony is that you and your friends or people are having a discussion about self-defense as it relates that's not my testimony i'm asking if that's what you were doing no you and your friends having a discussion about self-defense as it relates to mr rudolph's conduct no I didn't think it was self-defense at all from day one. She's why a were you liar. I wanted to know. Is it a crime for me to look at my phone for Jones, to be knowledgeable? No, don't ask questions. Answer them. Please. Okay, I was trying to be knowledgeable. That's the answer. Because it was relevant. It wasn't relevant. You just look up stuff that has no relevance or that you're not interested about? I look up stuff that I, I don't, I'm not knowledgeable about. That's what I look up about. Okay. All right, there's not going to be any more argument back and forth. Ask the question and you answer the question. Okay. April 13th, 2021, you liar search jet blue customer service you remember that okay and then on april 13th of 2021 you searched up pro bono you remember that uh-huh. is that a yes yes and then the same day you looked up pro bono lawyer you remember that yes what what does pro bono lawyer mean that's some, that was for something completely different a pro bono lawyer takes you and they take your case for free, for free. yeah it had nothing to do with no, I wasn't looking for a lawyer. This is something completely separate that you don't even know about. So that's not relevant to the case right now. Happened to be in the same uh, days where you're looking up defense attorney Mark Shiner net worth, and then you're looking for a free lawyer. And arguing. Next question, please sustain. You can make these arguments in closing. She, it doesn't matter what her answer is. You just ask the you jury. T- you testified or repeatedly that Keyshawn did not have his gun that night, right? Yes. And you've tested, re- testified repeatedly that Travis was the one that had the gun, and he's the one that shot Sebastian and Tyler, right? I didn't testify that. I saw it. You saw what? Travis? What? I saw Keyshawn not have his gun. You said Keyshawn did not have his gun, right? Correct. Okay. So. Isn't it true that your research regarding self-defense um, would have nothing to do with Keyshawn's conduct since he didn't have a gun? The only one that had a gun, according to you at that time, was Mr. Rudolph. Are you asking me a question? Yeah, that's the question. What's the question? Isn't it true that the reason you researched self-defense had nothing to do with your brother having a gun because you've testified repeatedly he didn't have a gun, right? Correct. He did not have a gun. And according to you, it was my client who had the gun and shot, right? Correct. And self-defense involves... The use of a gun and you're defending yourself. Seriously. Yeah, I don't think this question. Feel free to stand Seriously? up and stretch, folks. Can I get a break, actually? Yeah, few. Can I get a break? Actually, I don't think that question was appropriate. What did she try to leave? All right. Sit down. Next question. On a new subject. Wow. Let me look at this girl. What is she doing? I think she tried to leave. I think she tried to take a break. All right. Next question on a new subject. All right. Well, we'll take a restroom break then for, well, wait a minute. It's almost noon. How much longer have you got? Literally two minutes? Less than two minutes. Okay, go. Until I'm done to go home? Well, after redirect if there isn't. (laughs) Until then I'm done to go home? In for a penny, in for a pound. You set up your brother and his friends to go out and shoot your armed boyfriend. You set that up. One of them gets killed. The least you could do is testify and show up on time and dress appropriately for court. But even that's too hard for you. And, but we'll take a restroom break after uh, Cross is finished. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Perlette. You looked up self-defense because after speaking with everybody, you believed that somebody was acting in self-defense, right? Last time on that one. Weren't you? No. Then why did you look up self-defense? Because I have an iPhone and I can look up anything I want to. (sighs) On direct examination today with Ms. Edwards, you said you were asked some questions um, about web searches and you said uh, you did some of the searching in case if I need to turn myself in. Do you remember that? Ooh. Yes, I do remember saying that. What did you mean by that? I was unaware, unknowledgeable about this entire situation. So I did some research. That's the bottom line of it. 
Can we please move on from this question? Because you believed you had some culpability that you had. If I believe I had some culpability, I would have never came. I would have came in with a lawyer, a paid one, not a pro bono one. And I would have made sure that I would have never spoke to any law enforcement if I thought anything was going to happen to me. Did I do that? No, I completely from day one agreed, turned my phone in. Anything that was asked of me, I did. So no, you have it incorrect. And that's the last time I'm speaking on that. So you turned your phone in over a week later after you deleted items from it. No, when so when they told me to turn my phone in, my phone was turned in. And items were deleted from it, right? And they retrieved them is what I heard. Okay. And you were concerned still though. Uh, Who wouldn't be concerned? This is not a normal situation. Of course I'm going to be concerned. That's why you said I needed to do this research to see if I had to turn myself in. I research everything. I research what any little thing I research. I have no I'm a knowledgeable child. I'm sorry if you felt like this was inappropriate to research. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I'm a knowledgeable break, child. Is there going to be any reader? I'm a knowledgeable child. I don't care if there is redirect. I don't care. I don't want to hear it. I'm a knowledgeable child. Sometimes truth is said in jest because honestly, she is a child. Mentally, she's a child in a woman's body. That's not an adult. Wow. Oh, my goodness. At, at our peak concurrent viewers, we got like, Hold on, let me just tell you guys something right now. I, I'm blown away. We got like 1,330 something, almost 1,340 concurrent viewers at one point in time, which is amazing. Thank you guys so much for supporting the stream. It's 1,343. I'm gonna go through the super chats now. I'm trying, while I go through them, I'm gonna try to like decompress my brain. Um, I'm prioritizing super chats. Um, I do want to say someone had said something earlier about like they thought I was saying something about her intelligence and I addressed it, but I don't want people to be upset with the person that said that because people just misinterpret things. It doesn't mean anything. And like, it's fine. <laughs> I'm a big girl. I can stand up for myself. It's fine. And, and I didn't think it was something I just wanted to make sure I addressed that, but I didn't want to make the person feel bad. Um, Thank you guys so much uh, for supporting. Uh, if you do not want to stick around for the super chats, please just be kind enough when you're putting your shoes back on to like the video on your way out. I'd really appreciate that. This is so sad. This is. Uh, it shouldn't be muted anymore, I hope. Can you hear me? <laughs> Susie came and pushed the mic and turned it off and then like meowed at me. <laughs> okay, am I back? Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. But you guys got a rare Susie sighting. Guys, Susie turns 20 this year. I'm claiming it. I'm claiming it. She'll turn 20 in August. That's my girl. <laughs> she's she's 19 years old so uh someone asked how she's getting along with the cat i mean with the dog she's not <laughs> she does not like jazz um yeah but Susie hit the the volume button this is an unrelated potential icebreaker for the future oh we talked about this thank you tom thank you again tom they've confirmed they are non-human go back to the top of the chat for that one uh, uh nefertiti your gifted um memberships have all gone through Thank you so much for your gifted memberships. Jam Jam, welcome to the Lawyer Chicklets. Um, Geek Freak 2000. And I, oop, <laughs> thank you for the super chat. Deacon Fatal, thank you for the super chat. What in the days of our lives is this? My question exactly. Steph, Steph J, welcome to the Lawyer Chicklets. You my baby. Oh, no, no, don't do that. Okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um. Sorry, 
Uh, Iris in Texas, thank you so much for the super chat. Watch this live with lead attorney, but I am living for your reactions. Love your videos. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Deacon Fatal, thank you for the super chat. We were taking a break. I can uh, equals I can cheat. I'm still married and I've been cheating um, some. Not that won't work in an Excel spreadsheet. Oh, you're doing it like an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> no, that won't work in an Excel spreadsheet. That went right over my head for a second there. I got you. I got you. Yeah, very complex interpersonal relationships here. She secretly married. She separated from her husband. I always say when it comes to married couples, they're not done until they're divorced because a lot of married couples talk about this whole, oh, I'm separated. And then the next thing you know, they've been sleeping together the whole time. So I don't know if I ever trust that. But you should always be forthcoming with your partners, whatever your situation is. People deserve to know if you're married. You shouldn't lie about stuff like that. Nefertiti, thank you for the super chat. Well, she is never going to get an NFL husband now. LOL. Those dudes are going to see this and say, hell no, or preen up the hell out of her. She fumbled the bag. Yeah, no, she's... uh. I mean, it's it, no, I don't think any man that has any money would ever uh, be with her because this is, this is, I mean, I don't know any man who would period. I, I don't know. Maybe she gets some therapy and does some soul searching, but uh, she's been pretty um, lambasted in the media recently. So I don't know. She's going to need to maybe change her name, move away. It's going to be really bad for her if he gets convicted. People are going to, you know, people can be very inappropriate. And I've seen a lot of think pieces about her that were quite nasty that, I, you know, I don't condone the nastiness. And she's going to be in for a lot of trouble if he's convicted because people blame her for this whole thing. A lot of people do. B-A-W Law Chica. Hello. Welcome to the Lawyer Chicklets. I love your name. Nefertiti, thank you for the super chat. This some hood shit. <laughs> exactly. This is crap. I remember seeing back in my neighborhoods as a kid, she lied to get some hood justice and led someone to their end. Um, exactly. You know, growing up in Queens, I used to see stuff like this too. And just making sure she didn't turn off the mic. Sorry, she's gonna get she's gonna get whatever she wants. Okay. There's there's hair everywhere, and she's gonna get whatever she wants. <laughs> um Francine, Francine Harada, welcome to the Lawyer Chicklets. Um, tinge of Le Crack. I just, <laughs> Le Crack Rock. <laughs> I just wanted to pin this one. She was married, but mad at a man who said her BBL was a BB fail. And I hope you guys tuned into the beginning of the stream where I explain what a BBL, BBL is and why I thought that she was recovering from a BBL around the time that you know, their relationships started to deteriorate. Louise Lemon, thank you. Welcome to the Lawyer Chicklets. Uh, Lynn Walford, welcome to the Lawyer Chicklets. Delightful DLB, welcome to the Lawyer Chicklets. And Lillian, thank you very much for the super chat. I seriously watched this in bits and OMG. <sighs> and Lillian, thank you for the super chat. Immature, I agree. That's the right definition. This is horrible. This is not the streets. You got to grow up. And you have to leave childish things behind you. As people get older with more resources, they're able to do more than just punch each other. They can shoot each other. They can harm each other seriously. And you have to stop doing those childish type of things. And that's not real conflict resolution. It's not. And I know that like, you know, if here's the thing. If you this man really slammed you to the ground and he really committed an act of domestic violence against you, you don't get retaliation. You go to law enforcement. Some people not, might not like to hear that, but really that's the way to do it. And a lot of the times in our community, you know, women, black women that are genuine victims of domestic violence will be afraid to go to law enforcement because they don't want, uh, you know, the man to get killed or for him to have even worse consequences in the criminal justice system. But getting your brother or your cousin or Pookie and them to go down there and beat him up, that's not the answer either. I, I get all the, the things that are, are at play, but this was not the answer. This was horrible. This was a horrible thing to do. And, and honestly, I don't believe that he physically assaulted her either or, or slammed her down to the ground twice, picking her up in the air and slamming her down. I don't believe that happened. I'm just going to tell you my honest opinion. I could be wrong. I wasn't there, but there was video footage. And I think that if he had done that, it would have been captured. Geek Freak 200. Thank you for the uh, super chat. Mastermind is too much credit. Mm, maybe. Mm, not a very good one. 
Dr. Evil wasn't a very good mastermind, but he was a mastermind nonetheless. <laughs> but I see what you mean. And Lillian, thank you for the super chat. If they were going to talk, they'd have called ahead of time, not be sneaky. Exactly. Or they could have said, look, man, pick up the phone. You know, I want to sit down conversation with you. Going to someone's house late at night to confront them is a recipe for disaster. That is asking for trouble. You know, showing up at someone's house unannounced is asking for trouble. Don't show up in my house unannounced. Don't do that. You know, that's just asking for trouble. So I agree the sneakiness of it. It's like someone said, it's like a hit. It did seem like a hit coming late at night, multiple cars, multiple people. It seemed like a hit. Daria Smith says <laughs> with a Canadian 220. Thank you. This is what happens when you think you're always right. That's right. She's gotten away with being right or being allowed to think she's right for far too long. I'm persnick persnickety. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. If he gets acquitted over under on how long before she's blowing up his phone to get back with him, especially if he signed to a team. You know, he was injured. Um, oh, but then he got with Canada and he was trying to recover and maybe get back into the NFL. I don't know. I, I From her attitude, I wouldn't be surprised if she tried it. But honest, I hope he's acquitted. I hope he's acquitted. That's I, I shouldn't say that because I don't know everything. But I'm just going to be honest with you guys about how I feel. I hope the man is acquitted. That's my hope. I'm not going to lie. I told you guys I have biases and I think I'm biased in this case. I, I hope he's acquitted. Morgan, thank you for the super chat. Question, why is this witness not considered hostile? Uh, she's being cross-examined, so she is hostile to the defense. She's a prosecution witness. That's why, that's what allows them to cross-examine her. And Lillian, thank you for the super chat. Oh, Lord, she needs to check herself. This is so disturbing and disrespectful. I agree. Lisa Jackson, thank you for the super chat. Witness is making herself look like a whole certified jackass. I agree. Rihanna, nice to see you. Thank you for the super chat. You know what's crazy? The millions of cases just like this one happening across the United States that we don't get to see. Thank you, LawTube, for insight. As a criminal defense attorney, I can tell you, you know, maybe not to this extreme, but someone falsely accusing someone else of things or setting people up, it happens. Human beings are capable of depravity and these types of things do happen and people end up being wrongfully accused. Lisa Jackson, thank you for the super chat. All that attitude and she was late to court. The actual nerve, so much nerve. Deacon Fatal, thank you for the super chat. This case has gone from days of our lives to snapped within four hours. With this sounds like what it looks like, a hit for some cash. I don't disagree. Legal Watch, welcome to the Lawyer Chicklets. Deacon Fatal, thank you so much again for the super chat, super chat. Okay, notice the smirks and how proud of herself she is at this time. She thinks she got away with this, in my opinion. I think so too. There's some moments where the judge takes it a little too easy on her and she looks very, very smug. I'm blown. I'm so glad that you, I didn't know anything about this case. I learned about it all from you great lawyer chicklets. Thank you so much for telling me about this case. This is fascinating and edifying. I think it, it really does show a lot of our criminal justice system. This is the unfairness of the criminal justice system too, but he's got a jury of his peers. He has a chance with them. His attorneys are, you know, not holding back. So I really hope that it works out for him here, but I think it's possible this, you know, there's a potential this could be a wrongful conviction. Ann Lillian, thank you. You're my favorite. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate you, Ann Lillian. Um, where am I? Joe W., welcome to the Lawyer Chicklets. JJ, thank you for the super chat. I think it might have meant to be a super chat, but the message is redacted. Um, Ann Lillian, thank you so much. Wanted to get that woman a red nose like a clown. Erica, thank you for the super chat. She committed DV against him. She punched him multiple times. And then when she didn't get away with it or didn't get what she want, she turned around and set that man up. So in answer to my own thumbnail, did she set him up? I think she did. I think she set him up. I'd love to know what you guys think, though. I do. I want to say I put a um, poll in the stream, which I'm ending now. Um, and it's got 604 votes. And the question was... Do you think that she deleted the other things on her phone, like the call history, or do you think that um, the police deleted it, or do you think that the text messages were never sent, and you guys think 77% that she deleted those messages, she deleted the call logs, it was all her, it's not just a coincidence. 
All righty, guys. So again, I thank you so much for your time. Um, have a good night and be well. Bye.